ink. Let's double check. The light is on. Go. All right, we're good. I'll give us a quick countdown, and we'll go. All right, in five, four, three, two, one. And now we're live. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you, man? I'd like to shake everyone's hands when they come on for no reason at all. I don't know if you watch the old podcast, but I always shake hands with Stefan, and he looks at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> But <laughs> well, that's kind of what Stefan is. Uh, he he just kind of has that reaction. He just looks stupid. I think. No, I, I don't think he looks stupid. He just, I think he thinks I'm stupid, and he thinks he I don't think he thinks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think you're kind of stupid for saying yeah, well, that. Well, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the end of the podcast, by the way. I'll see you. I'll see you later. Is um, Jose? Is it Olivas Mendoza? Do you go by one and not the other? It's Mendoza Olivas. So it's. It's it's a long story. We How'd you end up with two it. last names? And I'll tell you. And it, and it used to bother the heck out of me. So um, when I came to the U.S., I came to the U.S. when I was 11 years old, right? From where? From Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I was born in a town called La Junta Chihuahua. It's a small town. La Junta. That sounds like a, a lyric from well, a Pitbull song. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dos, tres, cuatro. <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up there. Um, I came to the U.S. when I was 11. Uh, when you... When you're born in Mexico, you have two last names. Wait, everyone does? Everyone. Everybody what? does. What? Yeah, you use both of them. So the paternal goes first. So Mendoza is my dad's last name. Uh, Olivas is my mom's last name. And then you so, also had a middle name? No middle no? name. No one? Or just you? No, people have middle names. Uh, but so some people have in, four names. And here, people have uh, middle names as, as an actual name, though. It's like Think about like Luis Carlos, right? Carlos is the middle name, right? It's a C, yeah. usually. Luis C. Blah, right? Wait, are you saying in Mexico that's the way it is? Yeah, people can have four names, right? It, for me, it would, like, if I had, say my, my middle name was Luis, so it would be Jose Luis Mendoza Olivas, right? If, it, if you did have a middle name. If I had a middle name. Yeah. yeah. But what did you mean by people who have middle names that are first names? Well, like, yeah, like actual names, because I mean, those are the last name, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. So yeah, it's it's a it's, so it's a, an actual name like Luis is a name, Jose is a name, right? So in Mexico, everyone's hyphenated. Dad's name always first. Does that matter? Mom's name first. Yeah. So you're not hyphenated. So that is the problem that I was having because you know when you when you get married, you can hyphenate if your you name want to. Yeah. to have your husband and wife's last name. Um. So what happened to me was that when I came to the U.S., they didn't do that, but they, I kept my two last names. Mm -hmm. When I moved to, to Phoenix, Arizona, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, I moved to Arizona. I was up there for six years, came back. When I came back, the MVD just this up and decided to make my name Jose Mendoza Dash Olivas. Right? Now, that sounds like I married my mom. Which obviously I didn't marry. I love you, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't marry her. Uh, so it gave me a lot of trouble when I got jobs, though, because I was getting jobs and they were asking me what my full name is, mm -hmm. but my social security card didn't match my driver license. Because when you hyphenate it, they're assuming. Well, why did that make a big difference? Like, because guess... when you hyphenate it, means that you're you're taking on a, a, another last name. Right. So when, like when you mm -hmm. get married, you're taking off or you're taking on your your spouse's last name. Right. No, I get the difference on when it actually happens. Why did it? Why did it? Um, why was it an issue when you got a job? Well, because it didn't match. It didn't match. My, my, my social security card said. Jose oh, Mendoza it didn't match your ID. Yeah. So it they didn't have I a hyphen. You. And you're from Mexico. That looked double bad. They're like, so all right, dude, come on. I had to jump through a bunch of hoops. I, I literally went to the MVD like five, six times trying to have them change it. And obviously what they're going to say, you understand this, right? They're going to tell you, hey, you know, that's not your real last name. Uh, so we have but to you have through. the social to prove it. Yeah. But you need to have a, a social security card, a birth certificate, which I didn't have. My mom had it. Right. So mm -hmm. I had to jump through that hoop to get it. But it so happens that my mom had like a really old one. So I had to go to the uh, consulate in, in El Paso to go get one, which was actually a really pretty, pretty. So that's how you end up product. fixing it. You had to go yeah. do that. But it was so much, man. It was so much that I had to jump through. It was always a pain in the butt. So, yeah, it's. I know people that have issues, like mistakes in their driver's license, like in other ways. Like it, yeah. I, I knew a friend that it had the wrong sex and that doesn't matter. Like it didn't stop them from getting yeah, a job, yeah. but it's awkward when you go to buy beer oh, yeah. and they look at it and they're like, what? Uh, what was another one? I had something messed up about mine, but it wasn't my D. I think it was like a, and I wish I could remember. Maybe it was the way they had me entered me in the system like yeah. for work or something. And I think they had my name and put it wrong. So they would, oh, that's what it was at a job I had. They had, um, 
they they miss something. They miss like an eye at the end of William or something. Oh. It's like Willam or something. Will it was I something am. like that. And it was uh all I remember is some places wouldn't cash my check. This is back when I was yeah. paper checks. And they're like, dude, it doesn't match your ID. Yeah. Most people didn't care. They're like, let me see your ID. They look and they see William, William, oh, yeah, and they give yeah. it back. But I remember some places would, would like point it out, and I go, oh, it's a mistake. Like my work got it wrong. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they're like, dude, I can't cash your check. And that was exactly the same problem I was having. It's just when I went to jobs, you know, mm-hmm. they because they do a background check, so they're gonna check everything. Some and jobs do a background me. check. Well, uh, yeah, the you job were I obviously was trying getting. to get a legit job. Yeah, legit. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't working at, at, at a construction site or anything. Cause, you know, they probably don't even ask you for Dude, that. Dude, <laughs> I, I I got jobs before. I remember because someone asked me why I didn't. I got my GED. I didn't graduate. I was like three or four credits shy of graduating in high school. Okay. Um, because I, I lived on my own. I had my own apartment. And then I, I needed to take care of that more than I needed to go to school. Yeah. Part of it was I wanted a job because I wanted – I prioritized a job because I needed to pay rent. Um, and I, I, I was like 16 when I moved out. You wanted home. freedom. You wanted but to be – part of me like just didn't like school anymore. When I'm like, do I have my own apartment? I could party when I want. Oh. I have my own money. What's yeah. the point of this stuff? So either way, I, it was a little bit of both. But I, I, um, I, I didn't work – why am I telling you this story? What were we talking about? Dude, I totally blanked right now. Uh, I, oh, about um. Yeah, the double. Well, you were talking about the. We were talking about my double last name and how my driver's license was messed up or whatever. Bro, I can't believe this just happened. I like, literally like forgot. There's a reason why I was telling that story, and now I'm like, like I don't have any goddamn idea why. <laughs> that. Dang it, dude! I was it's thinking. all good, man. We can talk about something. Else. <laughs> well, it, it'll, it'll come nah, back man, to man, us. We gotta no. talk about this. It, what was I thinking though? God damn it, dude. So you you were saying that you wanted to have an apartment because, or you wanted to have a job because uh, you needed to have no, a job. I know job what I was literally just talking about. I'm trying to figure out what my point was. I feel I, like I was relating it to something you were saying. I think you um, were talking about the the the. the uh, do you say you? I had jobs that they don't check here, or whatever, and I've had. Oh yes, checking. thank you, God, dude. I don't yeah. even smoke weed, and my memory's messed up. <laughs> no, so I essentially like I never graduated, and I also didn't get my GED. For a long time, okay, gotcha. and the, because and the, I've always knew I should, but I would just I would apply for jobs, and it would say like, "Do you have your diploma or your GED?" And I would always select diploma. Like okay. I would never put GED. I just oh, put yeah. diploma, and I said, "What year?" I put 08. Okay. Um, and it, they uh, a it, lot. Some never... of them were like, we're, "We'll do background checks," and they never did. Um, and so it would never come back. I would always get jobs. So I, like for the longest time, I was like, "I'm just not going to like get it ever." Yeah. yeah. And then um, when I went to get the job that I work at now. I was like, like, dude, hey, they're going to check for sure because oh, yeah. it's a legit oh, job. Yeah. Like, and uh, so I went and got it. Like, I remember like, I'm going to have to study, but I knew that they were going to hire me and I knew yeah. I had a really small window. And they're like, when I called, they're like, we'll we can get it. you in next week to test. And so I was like, just sign me up. Yeah. So I just went in and test and passed them all, dude. <laughs> hey, yeah, Thank yeah. God. I didn't even study or anything. That's good. But it looked out. I got it. And then I, they never asked like for me to send them in even on this one. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, if it yeah. Ever, I don't even know if it matters like at all. Like, I'm not encouraging people to not go to school, but yeah, I'm saying, yeah. like, a lot of places don't care. Or if you just put you have it, then yeah. you have it. Well, I think most most of the places don't really care too much about the actual schooling. They When they do a background check, they care more about, like, uh, crimes and, and if you have any background criminal offenses or That's any true. kind of drug situation or any kind of, like, theft. that Because, you know, if you're going to be working in retail, working their cash register, you probably don't want to have some kind of, you know you stole something from a from a register in the past right you don't want i almost not gonna try to hide i almost had a history man because here's the thing is i have family members and friends that, that are felons for sure okay and when i consider when i always think about like their lives the reason why it doesn't bother me or i hate when people are like that person's a criminal dude no, we're all criminals man. No, because when i look at some of my friends or family that i'm referring to yeah. I did some similar stuff, if not the same thing. I just never got caught. Yeah, and oh, so yeah. when I look at people that have like backgrounds and stuff, well, first of all, what they did matters. Yeah, but yeah. mostly, like I don't really judge people like that. Yeah. Because I almost, I'll tell you a cool story. A lot of my friends know this, but now the whole world will know this. <laughs> I almost was one of those blue dots on the internet. Where I'm talking about a sex offender, man, but oh. not not in the way that you're probably thinking of, man. And so I hope whoever's listening like... doesn't shut the video off right now. I uh, on my 21st birthday, uh, my buddy Lloyd Hector, they're like, dude, okay. we're taking you out to 21st. I ended up going to Graham Central Station when that was a thing here, and we, I got, I was, I think it was hammered before we got there. I definitely drank too much. It was my 21st. I was being super duper encouraged by everyone to drink. Yeah, okay. we got there. I drank more. A big fight breaks out that night. One of the NMSU basketball players ends up getting cut open. It was one of the craziest things ever. They there was a huge fight. He got his someone cut him open with a bottle, 
Oh. He, I saw him oh. holding his intestines in his hands, oh. dude. That's how so bad that it was. Oh, he wow. fell over. They had to they drop a helicopter in like to pick him up. Wow. Crazy night. While all this is happening, I'm hammered. And yeah. so I'm like, what? And I had to pee so bad. And they <laughs> wouldn't let us back in the club because all this is before the helicopter stuff happened. This is like when he came outside. He's bleeding. People yeah. are fighting. The cops are trying to do, like get people situated. Um, they wouldn't let me back inside. And it's like, you guys need to leave. Everyone starts walking to their yeah. cars. And while I'm walking to the car, I'm like, dude, I just got to pee. So I'm going to pee in this parking lot. <laughs> and so I end up walking over to a random car. And I even looked around. I was like. I looked around and I didn't see anyone. Nobody. And so I was like, all right, Let's unzipped, peed, put it away, <laughs> start walking back to get in my car. The moment that I go to get in my, it was in my friend's car, I was closing the door. A cop sticks his hand in the door and like holds it open. Oh, He's like, step out. And I'm like, what? what? It turns out I was peeing on the cop car. Like he was in the car. <laughs> like I looked, I looked around to see if there was anyone, but I forgot to look at the actual car yeah, yeah. because I was hammered, dude. And so uh, that night, or he took me out of the car and he's like, hey, man, like, you can't, like, just be pulling yeah. your dick out in front of people. And I was like, dude, honestly, like, I am. I didn't lie. I was like, dude, I'm wasted. Like, that's why I'm, he asked me, like, why are you doing that? I think when cops do that, they want you to, like, bitch up or something. And yeah. I was like, officer, I'm wasted. Like, I don't have a good excuse for this. I needed to go. They wouldn't let me back in the club. So I needed yeah, to so go. I go. So I yeah. went. And I get I shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? But I was like, and he was like, uh, he ends up, like, cuffing me. My friends walk by and they're drunk. And one of my friends, Hector, was like, what are you doing? And he's like, dude, uh, just stay out of it. I was even telling them, I'm like, dude, it's all uh, good, dude. God. I'm going to go to jail. It's not a big deal. And I was like really drunk. Eh. Um, and then so that Hector starts going off on the cop. He ends up telling the cop, <laughs> or, or I'm sorry, I don't even tell you what he said yet. And so he starts yelling and they go, put him in the car to the, the guy, to the other officer, to, to me. Put you? Uh, yes. And so I get in the car and they go back to handle Hector. And then they come back. <laughs> and like, hey, man, I'm going to uh, pull your feet out. I'm going to pull you out. And he pulls me out. And he goes, hey, man, here's the deal. Um, your friend here, I guess he told the, he told that dude's, like, boss, like, whatever, the, what's the main cop called? Like, the supervisor. He told yeah. the supervising cop, like, when he came to calm him down because he's acting crazy. He was like, your uh, buddy told, he essentially told my boss he was going to cut his dick off. Like, or something like, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut, I'm going to cut. He's just talking shit. Like, I'll fucking cut your balls off, you pig. Like, just talking shit. <laughs> yes. And then he goes. I go, okay. He goes, one of you guys going to jail tonight. Who is oh. it? And I go, dude, take me. Because he was about to deploy, man. Oh, and so I was like, dude, yeah. oh, just take me to jail. Deal, yeah. And he yeah. goes, all right, fair enough. Get back. He puts me in the car, and I go, I'm going to jail, dude. He goes off, and he comes back, and he pulls me out, and he yeah, starts yeah. uncuffing me. He goes, I'm going to let you go, man. Um, we're going to take your buddy in because he just won't stop. He's telling, like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, dude, just take me. He's like, dude, at this point, it's not a choice anymore. Yeah. We thought he would just be cool. We'd tell him, hey, your buddy's going to go for you. But he just started talking shit. So they yeah. let me go and they arrest him. Oh. Take him to the station, man. <laughs> he ends up like, I don't think he got charged. They end up letting him go. They end up like finding out yeah, that he yeah. was about to deploy. Um, they did charge me though. Even though they didn't take me to jail, they charged me with indecent exposure. Oh. And so I was so, like, or they were charging me with it. And I was yeah. like, man, like, like, I don't know what that means. Like, am I going to be one yeah, of those dots? Uh, and I was like, I was really scared. Cause I'm like, dude, I was 21. I was drinking. Like it's oh, a yeah. stupid mistake. Um, and then so I go to court for it and I'm going to fight it because I'm like in my head, I'm like, dude, I'm going to be a sex offender. Yeah, that's... And the worst part, man, is like, so when we get to court, you ever been to court for anything ever? Yeah, yeah, I have. So there's a bunch of people there you don't know. They're all there for different oh, yeah, reasons. Yeah. And they'll be like, uh, Sabrina, whatever, come up here. So you're in here today for evading a police officer and for going 10 over the speed limit. Yeah, How do you yeah, please? Yeah, and they'd say your charges, right? Coming up next, yeah. uh, um, Danny, Danny, you're in here because you keep fighting with your mom and you're a gang. <laughs> like, they go through all that, yeah, right? Yeah. And then it's me, and they go, uh, William Palmer. And I go up there, and they go, you're here for, um, well, you know what you did. <laughs> and then everyone, <laughs> which I hate that he did, man, because, like, everyone in the, the courtroom, uh, like, was looking at me like, damn, hey, like, what, did you do? what did he do that they won't even talk about it, man? They probably thought I was, like, a murderer or something. Guy. And I was like, what? Like, it, and he ended up asking me about it, and I ended up just telling him, like, like, honestly, man, I was 21. It took forever to get a court here. It was, like, seven months later. Oh, yeah. I was like, man, like, I don't like really drink anymore. And I had, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. like, I don't like, it was just a stupid mistake. I told him yeah. about the event and he's like, dude, I remember that happening. He didn't say dude, but he's like, I remember like that, that because it was an intimacy basketball player. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I remember yeah, that happening. Deal. And then I told him your honor, like I, like this will never happen again. And he ended up dropping it, man. Yeah. yeah. And, but then here's the weird thing is he ended up telling me like, um, that it's not a felony for indecent exposure. 
you're allowed in New Mexico, which is fucking crazy. Well, I don't know if this applies to everything, yeah. but you're actually, it's a misdemeanor. You're allowed two misdemeanors. So if I pull my weenie out and I get a decent exposure, it's a misdemeanor. If I do it again, it's also a misdemeanor. If I do it a third time, it becomes a felony. I thought it was if you were close to like a, like a middle well, that matters school, elementary too. school, that, matters that too. type of thing. That matters too. Yeah. Um, and so, but it, it, no matter what it is, like if it's a sexual involving anything, whether it's like a, if a yeah. woman walks out of a bar with her like shirt down, yeah. you know what I mean? She can get charged with something. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Okay. But if she were to continuously do it on the All third the one, it would become a felony. Gotcha. Okay. So I would have been good either way, but like, dude, I was so happy oh, and I'm yeah. like, it made me realize like, damn, like I got to make sure I don't make stupid decisions, yeah. man. Because like Pete, you get labeled. Let's say, let's play out a different scenario uh, uh. that I did get charged with that. No one cares about what I did. They just see that I'm a sex oh, yeah, offender. If yeah. that was the case, right? And we had this weird societal thing where we kind of group everyone together. Yeah. And it's but have bad. you ever heard those stories where it's like one of them was like the kid. I saw one on ABC News or whatever, where NBC News, where the kid was like a sex offender for like five years. Yeah. And he finally got his name cleared. And it was like he hooked up with his girlfriend when he was like 18 yeah, and yeah. she was 17. Yeah, yeah. And that then happens. she ended up lying. Like it turns out they didn't hook up. But like yeah, he yeah. was like, we wanted to and I cared about her or something. It was weird. And he was registered sex offender like five years, dude. That like yeah. damn like he just got treated like everyone else it's crazy you think you think about people dating like you, you know you you could have a girl or a guy be 17 years old their boyfriend be 18 or 19 and you could go to jail for statutory rape if you wait until you're 18 and then the person that your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever is 19 i just good. think there should it's be levels the, the way there's levels to like different things right like yeah not that like dude, i don't care right i think if you're like registered you probably did something wrong and you shouldn't have done yeah. it but I, I, it always makes me think that how we like uh, a friend of mine, we actually got into a conversation about this recently, how we kind of like bunch, we're, we're addicted to grouping as a society. Like we group people together. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, uh, yeah. And then in between time. those groups, there's even smaller groups, right? Like if you've been to jail, you're a criminal. Oh, yeah. You're just a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. We don't care what you did. You're a criminal. And then within those criminals, like if you're a murderer, then you, if you're charged yeah. with murder, you're a murderer. If you're charged with battery, then you're an abuser. And you're oh, really, yeah. And then yeah. it gets even smaller, right? But we like to group people together. But I think we forget to like, ooh, all right, what happened? And understand that a lot of people, Kim Kardashian has gotten so many innocent people out of jail. Have you seen that? She's been I running a program it, where she yeah. helps innocent people fight their charges. And she's gotten some like obnoxiously large number of people yeah. out of jail. When I say obnoxiously, like what I mean by that is like, dang, like there's a lot of innocent people in jail, man. Oh, well, and they're yeah, humble man. when they get out. Just, they're like, I'm just glad that like I'm free now. I'm like you were never 15 years for a crime you didn't commit. Like that's crazy. That's well, crazy, think, dude. Think about all the people that are in, in jail for, for drug offenses, right? Like, you know, you could be walking down the street with a joint uh, right now. That's another so one. Like, they're talking about, I hope they find a way to go back and like um, reduce sentences. Will, if not, get yeah. rid of them. I hope so. I really Specifically, hope so. like in places where it's legal both now, like you got to go back yeah, and fix that. Somebody that's stuck in jail for, for or in prison for, for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden, hey, you know what? This is legal now. Imagine how they must feel. Imagine the the. Imagine the how they must feel, and they don't get out still, though. And think like, about, they're still in there. Like, not only is this legal, they're going to hold my charges still? Like, that's crazy. Think about the impact of, on society itself, too. Uh, these people that are in jails, be a, a woman or a man, they're not with their children. They're not. They're getting held back. I'm seeing their children on supporting society. And we're all paying for it in our taxes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's just it's, it's totally just a lose just... lose. It's it's ridiculous. And and it also creates that stigma again, where you're thinking, oh, somebody went to prison, so they must be a criminal. They're and they're a terrible person. It's but, weird because some people, a lot, most people go to jail because they did some something wrong. Yeah. And so it's like hard because you you don't want to. Uh, I guess you want to give people the opportunity to explain themselves and form your own opinion, right? Yeah. Because most of them are in there. Most people lie. So it's, you can never tell. So that's why you just got to pull the facts that you can get. Just try not to make uninformed opinions. It's just really easy to be like, you're bad. You did a bad yeah. thing. You're bad. Yeah. And that's just not true. There's and yin and yang. Bad people do oh, yeah. good things sometimes. And good people do some bad things. Oh, yeah. And if you just like going back to like me, like I've done some crimes that like I never got caught for. Like, but, but no, people will hire me. People will like be my yeah. friend. Like I, I literally told people that this is how crazy it is. I have a family member and I won't say it is, and you know who it is. And if they ever come on here, they can talk about it. But I have a family member that's a felon and I will talk to people and I will go, yeah, the only difference between me and Colin is Colin got caught, but yeah. you can tell people look at it different. The moment I say that they still, I will flat out tell them and they will still look at me different than they look at him. And it's like, 
Like, damn, like, just because the label's there, like, we, like I'm admitting that I've done some bad stuff. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of time people form their opinion based on that, like, the second-hand or third-hand experience on, on hearing about it, right? They'll, they'll think about, like, oh, you know, they heard that this person went to jail, but they may, they might not know that person personally or, or closely, right? So they'll form that opinion just based on what they know, but not necessarily a factual information in the background or, or that because they're friends with them, they heard it through the gate grapevine right and they they yeah. form their opinion and that's and that's unfortunately what's happening right now with all of us in social media right people people tend to gravitate and i was reading about a study a study about um humans uh gravitating towards what they believe uh believing that itself to be the right and whatever someone else believes is wrong right that's i think that's just human nature like Wait, explain that a little bit better what do so you mean? so when people um form an opinion say i have an opinion on something right let's give let's me an example say, uh, let's say i love toyota right okay. and i think every other car out there is unreliable okay. because i love toyotas right gotcha. now anybody else that hasn't had a uh, an experience with a toyota car m maybe they they're a ford family or the chevy family or they're whatever and they never had their vehicle be uh, unreliable they're gonna disagree with me they're gonna th say no toyotas are not the most reliable it's gonna be ford because gotcha. this is my experience people tend to gravitate towards that so whenever you see social media like facebook you see a news story that says hey this person did something bad you form that opinion mm -hmm. so now when you hear about that person doing something good you're like no that person is terrible i mean we're seeing it all the time with can't, I, I don't want to get too much into that because, of course, it's, it's about it's, Trump. Uh, well, not, not specifically just Trump, but anybody else in general that that gets talked about. Like they yeah. have that Avenatti guy. They have you know all these people. Like they they lead you to lead a, to form an opinion on him first, and then they find out oh that guy is actually a piece of shit, right? I mean that's that's hard to undo for some people, and think, that's the problem. I think you're 100 percent right, and I think Trump is the best example, and I I'm guilty of this, right? I, I've talked about this. I don't remember if it was on a previous podcast or just talking to a, a friend, but literally, I'm not a huge Trump fan. Yeah. So when people say things about Trump, I automatically assume bad That's things, a bad right? Thing. Yeah. And so it's, and it's weird how you're right, like once you have an opinion of them. But here's the thing, I've, I've known people that are, are being completely like unbiased and they'll talk about some of the good parts, yeah. but my mind immediately goes like, yeah, but he's, an, he's a racist. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and so like and it immediately it's... like eliminates everything else. But in reality, what I should be doing is like, Maybe he is a good businessman. He can be both, yeah. right? Can we not appreciate that he's a good businessman? Can we not appreciate that maybe he's a powerful figure? But he's yeah. also kind of stupid and he's kind of racist and he says That's... some dumb things and he's petty. He can be both. It shouldn't be offensive if I go, hey, he's a good businessman. Because yeah. if you say that yeah. to some people, they go, you don't even know all the people we stepped yeah. on to get there. Oh, I go, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it's ethical. Trust me. The, you and think everybody. Steve Jobs didn't do some unethical stuff oh, yeah. to get to where he got to? You don't everybody. think the, the Facebook dude did some stuff? Oh, yeah. But nobody, when they mentioned Mark Zuckerberg, we think about a rich young guy that's ambitious. We all want to be like yeah. him. Oh, yeah. Maybe not so much recently with the new stuff, but you really think that way. But when you hear a name that you associate with bad things, something as bad as racism, Definitely. and you tend to not listen to anything else. You label that, and you create a yes, it, like back an to opinion. Labels. So... I wanted to talk a little bit more about that just because, just because I feel like a lot of people have a misconception of, of what Trump is and what specifically it's is affecting us. And I don't think that people realize that what is affecting us isn't necessarily like his policies or uh, what he has been able to do or not do. It's more his character. People people love him or hate him because of who he is he's brash he talks you know he says like says it like it is right yeah and, and people either love or dislike that i don't necessarily love it but i don't dislike um him as a president because i believe that he's just a figurehead man i mean the, the presidency isn't just one person there is a thousand it's thousands fun to of people hate working. Trump. we have to admit that it's it's fun it's yeah. everyone's doing it Here's the thing is people are mind blown. People forget he won by a lot. Like he didn't yeah. like barely win. And so yeah. when people hear like there's no way he wins again, I go, yeah, probably. Because yeah. who else is going to beat him? And I'm not saying that like I think he should yeah. win, right? I'm saying he probably will. Oh, yeah. I had that people don't realize well. people like him. And I so think, like yeah. what what do you, people like under you know what I mean? It's just hard because I I will be the first one to admit that I don't know enough about politics to choose a side, but I know what I see and I know as a human being I don't like him. 
what yeah. what his policies are. Is he good for the U.S.? I don't know. Yeah. But if yeah. I'm going to vote, I think I should figure that out. And I'm not going to blindly vote for the other person because I hate him. Like, yeah. It's just not how I do things. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. could be anyone. Remember it was Clinton, uh, Hillary, and everyone's yeah. like, well, who do we vote for? We hate both these people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you hear about all this stuff that has happened in the background, like the, uh, what is it, DNC, the Demo Democratic Land mm -hmm. National Committee, uh, screwing everybody else over to go for her, right? That's that's shady in itself you know you're thinking about like voting for a politician because you like their policies because you think they would be a good a president to the nation yet you start off with that that's terrible i mean no matter who is going to be the president if they have a shady background or shady uh, it just gives you a bad impression of that person no matter how much you hate the other person it's kind of like between the uh, choosing between a, a turd taco and a huge douche, like uh, like <laughs> like uh, South Park put it. That was great, right? It, it, the turd taco or a uh, giant douche. Which one do you want to pick? They're both shitty, right? You yeah. Know, pick your poison. So it's it's terrible. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about my twenty first birthday, man. Because I had yeah. It. Let's skip the politics stuff, man. Because I don't feel like I'm educated enough to own it. Yeah. I, but I think we talked about it enough to understand. Because the main reason it was brought up was because of labels, right? Yeah. We're talking about how we label criminals or we yeah. label people, yeah. we label him. And we're both admitting that maybe we shouldn't do it that much, right? Yeah. So we can leave that one alone because I, I, I hate getting too deep into it. As a and white then, dude talking about Trump, <laughs> man, it never ends well. And I kind of don't like him. But if I remotely say like something like I think he is a good businessman and I'm just solely basing it off the fact that he has a lot of money, yeah. I don't know. I started yeah. this conversation uh, off saying I don't know. People will get upset. And, and then, so – that's you know, why I don't want to get too deep. Into unfortunately, that's the problem with most people, though, is that most people are uninformed. They, most people don't know, but they want to. Not only are they right misinformed, away. they pretend they are informed. Yeah. At yeah. least I'm admitting, hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. don't listen me to me, too. dude. I, mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't yes. know about the, the policies with China or But you will get trade, people that right? feel like they're totally, yeah. totally. Um, because they follow a specific uh, stream of. Yeah, if I follow source. a bunch of people that like a certain politician, I'm going to yeah. feel that way. You feel How like many you know are you watching people. about the other person or that hate the person you like? Yeah. Anyways. I definitely want to hear about your 20. Yeah. This is about your 21st birthday, like yeah, your actual 21st, birthday? Yeah, the 21st birthday. Did you uh, almost catch a sex offender charge? No, I did not. Because you do realize you have to top that story, right? I don't. Uh, I, I didn't. You don't have I to didn't, do shit. No, I, I don't have to do shit. Uh, uh, so I, I didn't do that, but I did have a pretty interesting one that I remember fondly because it was fun and it was very... It was very interesting. So I, I was 21, right? I had a roommate, um, an old roommate. Actually, it wasn't my roommate anymore. I had He had been my roommate before. So you guys were um, friends. Yeah, we were good acquaintances. We were going to school at the same place, right? Uh, this guy was going to school for, I wouldn't name names because I don't really like to do that, but this guy was going to school for uh, advertising, right? Okay. So he was really good at advertising himself. So this guy knew everybody. Kind of like you, man. You know everybody. When you go to the bar, you know you know everybody. Everybody's like, oh, everybody. Yeah, I like, so, to, I like to, to know. Yeah, I like to have a big audience. So yeah. this guy knew everybody, right? And he's like, hey, man, we should go to this uh, place in Phoenix called uh, Chili Bombers. It's a bar up there. Um, and he's like, would you go there? I'm like, okay, well, it's my birthday, right? It's my 21st birthday. Is that and where you lived at the time or you lived... I lived in Phoenix. Uh, yeah, I lived in Phoenix for for about six years. I went so to during college that time. over there. Yeah, so during that time, I was twenty one. Um, so I I go to Chandler Bombers with this guy. He's you no know, super. He knows everybody, right? He's mm -hmm. Super popular. Uh, so he, and he goes around. You know, you know what happens when you're twenty one. He's like, oh hey guys, check this out. This is my friend. My He's twenty one today. Uh, so yeah, I ended up drinking shut, way shut, too shut, much. Shut, 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 shut. Like at that, <laughs> like at my bachelor party, you remember that doing yeah. the chicken dance. Um, I didn't get that like that, but yeah, it was pretty bad. So anyway, I made it through. I didn't die in the. <laughs> I didn't die in the bar. You made it to the club. <laughs> well, I made it to back home, right? Okay. And I'm sitting there. I remember playing this game called uh, Fight Night. It's a boxing game. I used, I used to, to love, love that game. game. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. So I got home and I'm playing it. I'm I'm shit faced, man. Uh, and then. Uh, Another uh, one of my roommates and his buddy come out and they're like, oh, you know, we're going to head out. We're going go to go over to our buddy's house, or whatever, go hang out. I'm like, oh, cool, man. you guys have a good night, whatever, blah, blah. Yeah. So I'm sitting there playing. They, we live in the third uh, floor, by the way. So we had an apartment, third floor. Uh, they go out. Not three, four minutes later, uh, my buddy's friend comes in and he's like, hey, man so and so just broke his foot or just broke his ankle and i'm like what and i'm 
you know, I'm shit faced, dude. So, <laughs> so I'm like, what? I, I run outside, and sure enough, my, my my friend is in there holding his leg, and I'm like, oh shit, he broke his ankle, right? Like, what are we gonna do, right? I'm I'm shit faced. I'm not thinking straight. I'm like, what are we gonna do? We, we you know we, we need to take him to the to the hospital or whatever. So we do get a little crew of people. We got this little tiny little car that. Uh, a friend of mine had at the time. Tiny what kind of little, car was it? it was like, think, like a, what would you compare it to? A tiny little Toyota Corolla. Uh, so it was a four door or two door? It's a four door. Like just really small. Four yeah, door. but and at probably like an eighty eight, eighty nine Toyota oh, Corolla. If, if you've never seen one of those, it's about the size of the probe that you had outside the red little probe you had. It was a Elantra, but it was an old Elantra. Like okay, a really old one. Yeah, so about that size of that, right? Okay. We packed about eight people into it. And Jesus here we are, Christ. including <laughs> broken ankle guy. Yeah, he broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we drive down to the hospital, and I'm sitting there thinking like, oh my god, he broke his ankles. I'm still freaking out, right? Because I'm, yeah. you know, I'm super drunk. So we get to the hospital. Um, and we're all hanging out there. You know, we're waiting in the in the waiting room in the emergency emergency room. Uh, and then uh, eventually someone comes out, and they're like, they're just looking around. I guess they didn't call a name. They they come around. They're looking at us, and they start looking at me. And they're like, "What happened? Like, like what's wrong?" Because I was sitting there in the chair, freaking mm -hmm. wasted, right? They're <laughs> looking at me, and I'm like, "No, it's not him. It's it's that guy over there. Go look at him, because he's got the broken ankle." But they're looking at me like I was like the guy that was gonna get admitted to the hospital because I was hammered. I was sitting there looking like I was about to pass out. That's funny. Man. <laughs> So that's my story. It's not as cool as yours. Wait, did you never, no. how did he break his ankle? So he didn't break his ankle. <laughs> that wasn't the point of the story, though. I know, that but that's what piqued my interest. I was like, wait, is he okay? Yeah, he, he twisted his, his uh, he sprained his ankle. He didn't break it. So he basically, he, had, he did have so to wear a boot for a little while. You didn't all eat me. To be well, there. yeah, yeah, I guess we all kind of overreacted. But, I mean, he was sitting there holding his ankle. I'm thinking, oh, it's broken. I'm shit-faced. So it's broken ankle, right? Well, yeah, plus your friends hyped it up. It probably, it's yeah, he ran back broken, up and he's right? like, he just broke his ankle. And I'm sitting there shit-faced. So I'm like, oh, uh, oh, my God, you know, I, let's if, go help if him. If I was, <laughs> this is how bad I used to be. If I was 21 and I was wasted and they're like, hey, uh, whatever, one of my friends, he broke his ankle. Like, oh, thank God. Like, I'd be happy that he, nothing worse happened. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, just Didn't call 911. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, they get beat up. Do we have to go find someone? But if they broke dude, their ankle, we, I'm like, dude, we were God, poor, though. Worse. We were all poor. I get what you're saying. Didn't have any insurance. None of us did. I didn't have insurance. Yeah. He didn't have insurance. I remember him talking to me about the bills afterwards and having to pay a bunch of money because of his sprained ankle. And he had to get one of them boots and he had uh, um, crutches for a little while. So. Anyway, uh, that's my uh, 21st birthday story. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But definitely um, didn't top mine, but it was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought you were going somewhere with your buddy's ankle, man. I thought that was going to be the well, highlight. I, didn't, I told you it wasn't going to be that. And I, and I said I didn't really have to top that, shit, man. so I didn't have to top shit. So, you know, <laughs> whatever, man. No, yeah, man. so. <laughs> I think, uh, man, have you ever been to the hospital, like, admitted? Well, I work at the hospital, so I've I know been at that. the hospital a lot. Have you been admitted? <laughs> no, I've never been admitted. You never, Actually, I have been admitted to the hospital uh, in Mexico. It wasn't an admission, though, uh, so I haven't been admitted, but I was, um, so I was in a, I'll tell you the background. I was in, a, in an accident when I was 16 years old. I was on the back of a pickup truck. Uh, my good buddy from Mexico was learning how to drive mm -hmm. uh, stick shift, right? So we're in Mexico. There's a lot of dirt roads out there. We go out, and he's uh, he's driving on this uh, really um, sandy kind of rocky road, right? And he, he's pushing it because he's learning how to drive. He doesn't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's doing about 60 on a dirt road. And we're just cruising in, in Sounds a Sounds like he road. knows how to drive to me. If you can hit 60, you officially know how to drive. Well, that was a bunch of, a bunch of boys <laughs> in a, in a truck, bro. went through five gears, man. Come on. Yeah, well, he just kept going up. Maybe he didn't know how to go down. Oh, can you go down? How do it's, you do it? You can't like, go from uh, five to one. Hitting the hill on your bike, but you don't know, no one tell you how to break it. <laughs> yeah, so just go faster, right, and see what happens. Uh, so anyway, we're going down the road really fast. And uh, the truck, I was in the back of the truck, and I'm sitting in the like bed. Like, literally of the, the truck. bed. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm sitting in, on the side of the, the, the truck, you know, doing 60, like That's an idiot smart. at 16. Um, and so the truck starts fish telling, obviously, you know, Sandy Road, I fly out. I flew out the back of a truck. Man, I remember, I remember to this day, like the feeling of it. I was falling back, and I remember that the sky was like super blue, mm -hmm. like not a cloud in the sky. And I remember think, thinking, like, oh my God, like I just fell out. Like, what the hell? Did you break anything? Well, I I smacked my head. I got a lot of scars. I didn't break anything, but that's uh, that's the segue into that. So I my brother took me to the um, 
to the hospital it's a mm -hmm. small clinic really what they have over there uh and they were like oh my god you know he you have a fracture in your cranium right so you're gonna have to go to the big hospital which is in a, in a whole nother town like an hour and a half away Jesus Christ. so i had to drive my my brother drove me with his girlfriend at the time mm -hmm. i'm in the back holding my head with a towel driving for about an hour and a half were you bleeding from your head yeah it was well they took me to the to the to the um the clinic for a little bit so they patched me up a little bit but I i'm holding you. a towel to my head you know i'm like open still and driving down the street they they did some x-rays on me uh the doctor actually came in there with his finger and he's just digging in he there. Came in there with his finger. Yeah, he came in and was just he one brought finger. his finger with yeah, him. Yeah, he brought it like this, and he was. That's like a dope doctor. Most doctors forget their fingers, man. Yeah, this guy brought his. Yeah, he brought he brought ten actually. He brought I 10. think he had all ten, Damn. maybe nine, but yeah. Mexico so he came in there with. It. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> so <laughs> he came in there. He came in with his finger. <laughs> and uh, and he started digging around, and he was like, "Oh, I don't think it's it's fractured, right? I don't feel any part of that." Was his fracture test? Yeah, was that his was finger? his fracture test. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a doctor or anything. That can't be legit test. <laughs> hey, man, that's the way it happened. I'm just telling you how it happened. If so, if I got shot and the doctor were like stuck his head in there and started feeling around, and he's like. Does it seem to have hit your heart? I was like, dude, like, give me a new doctor, dude. If I didn't already die from that, wound. I was in Mexico, okay, man. I'm, pre <laughs> I'm pretty I don't know sure. About his credentials. That's I didn't so ask funny. Him. He stuck his fingers in your wound and yeah. felt to see if it was cracked. He's like, is it, is it cracked? You know. But eventually, they did do an X-ray in my head, and I didn't have a crack, thankfully. But my mom, my mom was freaking Turns out, out there. That I was pretty there. Smart then. Yeah, he was right. Damn, well, we're assholes, man. We shouldn't have made fun of him. I got a spot on. Sorry, Doctor, whoever you yeah. were, man. You he, said but my if life he was probably. there, he's like, "Fucking told you, man. I you told know, you, it was nobody listens to me. <laughs> nobody listens to Doctor Crazy Head." Yeah, but I haven't. I haven't been admitted to the hospital. I, I, uh, I've been um, in accidents before, but I've never been admitted. Thankfully, because no. I don't think it, it'll be a, f a fun experience for anybody. Really, I mean, yeah. I don't think anybody wants to go to that. I've hospital. been hospitalized one time. At least one time that I count, like I've been to the ER to get stitches. I hit my head once when I was a little kid on a, on a bike, uh, not uh, like a bicycle. Um, I wasn't riding a motorcycle when I was a kid. That would have been crazy. <laughs> uh, but that didn't count because I was like, and they stapled my head shut and then they gave me a shot. And I think it was out in like two hours. Yeah. Uh, that was in El Paso. But I did go to one, uh, I have one really big, um, where I got hospitally admitted. Hospitally admitted. Is that a thing? No. No, it is now. I got admitted to the hospital. That's, that was, I was going with that one. Okay. That was next. Let's do that. No, I got admitted to the hospital because I had a motorcycle accident. And the people that know me will remember this, but I was, I think, like, maybe, like, 22, 23. Uh, and I got, it was my second motorcycle. I was riding it to work and back. Um, and I was trying to meet some friends at the bowling. That was my day off, actually. So I stopped uh, at a pit quick, in, uh, which is a gas station here. And I got uh, two monsters. There were two, two for four. Oh, and I put them in my bag. And then later on, because I crashed, um, they ended up thinking it was like DWI because they could see liquid and they could oh, smell geez. like something. Yeah. And they're like, "Were you drinking?" Anyways, that, that <laughs> became a bigger monsters, deal. Man. <laughs> but I had two monsters, and I was on the way, and I end up hitting the weird thing. You know when you get to a light and it turns yellow, and you have to decide. I'm going to speed up or I'm going to slow down. Yeah. There's this weird moment where you don't know. And it's, yeah, like, you can't, it's oh. like valuable time you're wasting right there. So the person in front of me hit the yellow light. They decided, hey, I'm going to speed up and take it. Yeah. And then at the last second, they decided to change their mind and hit their brakes. Oh. During this time, the way it was, there was a cafe on the right-hand side. Okay. There's a family that was walking out. And I had looked over at them naturally. So when I looked back forward, and it wasn't a total right. Like, they weren't on my – it was not very far off my – it was like in my yeah. peripheral pretty much. And then I could – as soon as I saw them, I looked back. They had hit their brakes. And so I was going like maybe like 40 miles an hour at this point. Yeah. Uh. And then I hit my brakes. I got the little death wobble. And then I turned. I caught it. Like when there's a death. I've been in a death wobble before on my bike. Yeah. And I can usually catch it pretty good. So I caught it. But by the time I caught it, I, was, I wasn't going straight anymore. I was going to the right. And I was headed right towards that family. I just uh. walked out of the cafe, man. Um. And then, like, I, I was going right at them, so naturally I just turned. Yeah. And when you're on a bike, have you ever ridden a motorcycle before? Uh, yeah, I have. You really want to lean? Like, you want to lean to yeah, turn? Yeah, they do, yeah. But it, I was, it happened so quick that I turned the thing, so and you, it kind of snatched yeah, it. Yeah. And then it threw me off the bike, threw me surprisingly, thank God, not into the back of the car. I think I would have died. Oh, yeah. But I went to the side of it, flew all the way out into the middle of the intersection. At this time... The other side had already turned green, Same. and it was an exit from a highway, 
And if you're ever, I'd have to show you where it was at. It would make more sense. It wasn't a normal exit where you come off slowly. It's like a sharp turn. And when it turned green, the people exiting didn't really slow down. So they, so they were go. already going. Yeah. And so they hit my bike. My bike spun around and whacked me in the face. And I was oh. out cold. So not only did I wreck and slide, and it was like an hour. Like when you're in the middle of an accident on a motorcycle, it you feel every moment. dude. It, it, it happens fast, yeah. but you remember every little slide. Yeah. I was getting road rash. I remember like the whole thing. It felt like I flew 100 yards, which obviously I didn't. But that's how it feels. Yeah. And I slid out. And I remember like just looking out my visor. And it was completely uh, fogged from my breath. And then all of a sudden, just out. And I remembered everything up to that point. And then I woke up. And I remember I was in the middle of the street in the intersection. Um, they had cut my clothes off of me. Because anytime there's like head trauma or something. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. scared. Like, they essentially cut all brace. my clothes off except for my briefs. And I was, it was in New Mexico in the middle of the summer. So the pavement, the asphalt was so hot. <laughs> and um, I also remember I had a boner. Um, no, you didn't. I did have a boner. Because I guess a lot of times when you when you hit your head, like it sometimes causes you to have a boner. I found this out later on. Like head trauma sometimes will make you erect. So I literally I had <laughs> so a boner. You're kidding. I had a okay. bo- no, no, I'm, I was being serious. <laughs> you're like, this is all right. We get like, it. No, you didn't. No, I literally had a boner in the middle of the road. Um, and uh, <laughs> mostly because I could see it. <laughs> uh, so they, people were passing by like that guy is they really didn't small, take my helmet off because i think they're still scared of spinal injury so they pulled my um to, so i can breathe they had pulled the the mask up like the oh, little okay. slider yeah, yeah. thing so i could see out now ABCs. but i still had my helmet on and the way i had landed i could see my penis and like i could see that I had a boner but i couldn't feel it i couldn't feel anything <laughs> and so i remember thinking i was paralyzed dude and i don't know if it was the trauma of like falling or something um because obviously i ended up being fine but yeah. or maybe it was temporary paralysis for whatever reason i couldn't feel when they were squeezing me and then I had it, but I could feel my abdomen. They were squeezing your boner or what? what yeah, they were squeezing my penis. It was weird that they would do that, right? Yeah, that's no, weird. I'm just that, I don't think that's protocol. Yeah. Like, I, I, you don't, like you sir, never can know. you feel I mean... this penis grab? I'm like, no, am I paralyzed? No. <laughs> my, my penis is my paralyzed. Penis. Take my legs, not my penis. <laughs> no, he had told me about my legs and stuff. And he said, tell me if you feel this. I said, okay. He said, tell me if you feel this. I said, okay. He goes, hey, I, if you don't feel this, I'm hitting you. And I was like, oh, no. But he did feel my abdomen and I felt the pain like right here. Okay. And so like. Because of that, they were like, "Hey, man, you're um, we want you like we're gonna we're gonna airlift you." So they ended up landing a helicopter in a different location. They put a Sia. brace on your neck, right? They did. Okay. And they yeah, put me in an ambulance, that, yeah. took me to the to the helicopter, and I was in and out this whole time. Like I don't remember the 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 ride. I, don't, I blacked in and out like a little bit during the whole like checking on me thing. Um, and then I remember blacking out. I don't remember getting on the helicopter. I'm mm. assuming they like paddled me, paddleboarded me on there or something. But I did remember waking up on the helicopter. Have you ever been in a helicopter before? No, I haven't. It is loud. That's why they have in the movies or whatever, they have they those have the headphones. headphones. Yeah. And so, like, I, I didn't know that. I didn't understand that. But I remember speaking because I was telling him, like, hey, like, I'm in pain. But they couldn't hear you. They couldn't hear me. And I couldn't hear myself, like, because, like, of how loud it was. Like, I could kind of hear, but it sounded like I was talking in my head. So you're like, oh, I'm deaf. Dude, no, I was like, I can't even speak. Like, I'm mute. Like, it was, like, <laughs> tripping me out. And then I'm like, what if I'm, like, having an, an outer body experience? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I remember, like, he he was on his phone. I think he was, like, playing, like, a game, if I had to guess. Oh, yeah. But he was just on his phone. And the way they sit, because there's not a lot of room, his it's his crotch. So I'm like this. <laughs> and, like, I'm, I can't move. And so I'm moving my head to get his attention because I'm, like, fucking hurting, dude. And he's just on his phone. He can't see my face. All I, I can't see his either. I can just see his phone because the angle. He was, okay. like, like, just on his phone. Why well, are like, so, many, to... so many crotch shots in this story? Yeah. <laughs> so much. You're missing the point of the story, <laughs> I'm listening, man. Go ahead. No, so I'm you're in kidding. pain. You're looking at his crotch. Okay, go ahead. Yes. And then he wouldn't. He didn't see me. And so he gets me to the hospital. Uh, and they end up pumping me full of penicillin and whatever whatever else. Morphine. Whatever they oh, give yeah, you. probably morphine. And then, um, yeah. And then, I, and obviously, in and out. I remember them putting me in the x-ray machine. And then I kind of, like, forgot. And then I woke up in a room. And my parents were there. Um, and I guess they had called and I, I, I never know, like, how do they know, like who to call? Like, how, dude, how do they even know who I am? Like, I, it was like, obviously like, maybe they look at my wallet. Maybe they look at, like, I always wonder that. Yeah. Um, but the lady ended up telling me that I actually gave, like, apparently oh, okay. in my weirdness, I yeah, actually they don't gave always, always the know, nurse they... the phone number. I said, you need to call my dad. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I don't remember that, but that made sense. And so they were there and they were crying and I was trying to figure out what had happened. Um, and I remember they came in. And they were like, uh, "Hey man, we uh, we did some X-rays and you're good." And I was like, "Like I'm like I'm gonna live, like kind of thing." And they're like, "No, like you're good, like like nothing's wrong. Yeah, like, like you're fine." And I'm like, "Well, something's wrong, dude. Like I'm <laughs> like, like what do you CT? mean nothing's well, wrong? Yeah. 
they didn't even bandage me up, dude. I was bleeding from my arms. My knees had grinded like down. Like I still oh, scars yeah. on my knees. You could see my bones, dude. And they were just there. And then uh, they're like, "Hey, man, like you didn't, you don't have anything wrong." Like they did an X ray, and then whatever the other scan is, where they look at your organs. I don't know. Is that an X ray? Yeah, it? like a CT. There you go, yeah, CT. Yeah. And they're like, "Hey, man, like I don't know what happened. You might have had temporary paralysis. Like you obviously hit your head hard uh, oh, yeah. because uh-huh. of the bone." Or anything. That's yeah. not what he said. He didn't say like because of your boner, you have head trauma. He okay. said because of your head trauma, that's why you got the boner. And he was explaining stuff to me. And then he goes, "Well, you're good to go whenever you're ready." And I thought it was so like inappropriate. For your next boner? Or? No, like to leave. <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And they're like, um, "No, like, dude, I'm like bleeding." Like, yeah. <laughs> and they go, "Oh, I mean, do you want us to like clean you up?" Like he told me that, oh, and I was yeah. like. Yeah, 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 man. And he goes, all right, we'll do that, and then we'll get you out of here. And I was like, what? And I was still woozy from the medicine, and they came in, and they, like, did a little bit of cleaning, yeah. and then they, like, like, oh, they cleaned me, and they're like, you're good to go. And I'm like, can you guys, like, wrap this shit up? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like, if I was burdening them, like, I guess. And they, this is in El Paso. It's University Hospital. Oh. And then they, they end up, like, going back and wrapping me up, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I was in scrubs because they cut all my clothes off me. Oh, yeah. So that's how yeah, I walked paper out. Paper scrubs. My yeah. parents like, where do you want to go? I'm like, just fucking home. Like, take me to my apartment, dude. It wobbled into my apartment. Here's the worst part of the story. So I'm gone. Remember I told you I was meeting my friends at the bowling alley? Nobody thought it was weird that I didn't show up. So nobody came looking for me. <laughs> dude, I get home, and my roommate is having a fucking party, dude. There's tons oh, of people in my house. Yeah. And they're like, Will! <laughs> just show up. And my friend from out of town was Is coming that a in town. Is costume party, Will? Why are you dressed as? Dude, bro? it's even worse. My buddy that was traveling down from Albuquerque that was there, he just showed up. Like, he didn't know anyone, and my roommate was there. He's like, Is this Will House? He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's partying with them. And I'm like, dude, he's like, dude, I was wondering where you were at. And I'm sitting there like, what happened to you? And I fucking, I cussed everyone out and I was bleeding and I walked oh, in. Man. One one of my roommate at the time was like, dude, you need to get high. And he gave me a hit from a zong. It was like a bong shape, like a Z. Uh, took a, a big zonk. old hit, dude. And then I just got high. And the next morning I felt it all and I took my meds and stuff. But that was it, man. And then I went to the follow-up appointment in Crucis and they're like, dude, you didn't break anything. You don't have any fractures. You don't have any organ damage. Yeah, dude, I don't know what happened. It was more than luck, I think. Yeah. But for whatever reason, like nothing ever came up of it. I just moved on. Yeah. I did get a really expensive helicopter bill, though, oh, um, yeah, which I did yeah. not pay and it came off my record. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of kind of like thinking back to when I fell out of the truck and how that experience was when I was at, like... I remember going back home. They did bandage, bandage me up and, you know, they took me home or whatever. And I remember the third or the second, third day uh, having to take the bandages off and taking a shower. And I remember the water like falling on my wounds because I was, I was all rashed up. I mean, my oh, arms sure. were tore up. Dude, road man. rash is was... the worst, man. Because and I... it's, it's like naggy pain. Like it's oh, like yeah. burnt. Like if you got burnt, right? Yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah. They were giving me, uh, I think, uh, hydrocodone I was taking. Um, and I was taking it at regular intervals, but uh, they give it to you like every six hours or something like that. So if you're taking it every six hours, you have to give it in the middle of the night, right? If you start like at a schedule or whatever. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of the night, when it when the pain um, relief ran out, I would be waking up screaming, man. My mom would tell me still. She's like, yeah, I used to wake up like screaming in the middle of the night. She'd have to run in there and give me the medication because, you know, she'd be sleeping. I mean, yeah. middle of the night. So she'd be all... I'm freaking out about that. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's rough. I, I got lucky, too, that I didn't have any breaks, any anything Yeah, you're major. going pretty fast, dude. I always yeah. wonder... When, I when remember I, rolling a bunch of times. When I think about that, when I think about the accident, I think about that, and this is a weird segue into this, but then I think about other people that have died, um, and it's weird how sometimes people die from less. Oh, yeah. Like, like the yeah. Stingray dude, uh, the oh, yeah, crocodile Steve guy. Irvin. Yeah, yeah, it's he, like he died from that. Yeah. Do they let you pet the stingrays at the, like the zoo? Well, but apparently here I am. penetrated his heart though. Yeah, That's, I get it. This yeah. was a, it was an asshole stingray. He obviously yeah, like, plotted this. Yeah, stingray man. <laughs> He's like, I'm more than just a stingray. I'm a stab ray. Watch <laughs> this, and he just took his heart. Let's get out. a petition going to go and find that fucking stingray. I don't think any. Was it in the ocean? I don't, I don't even know the full know. story. <laughs> yeah, but in either. general, you get the general <laughs> idea. Is like I always think of people like that, and I go like, damn, like. And then I think about me, and I'm like, dude, I should have for sure died. Like, See, we formed a, an opinion on that stingray already. We don't, we don't even know. What do you if think that stingray we're was like, the stingray? Yeah. Do you think other sea creatures judge? Fuck no, they don't. There's no, like, judgment <laughs> down there. I know my there. dogs judge me, man. Paloma judges yeah. the fuck out of me. But not bro. in the ocean. Dogs judge for sure. 
Yeah, well, when they have sea dogs, you know, I mean, come on, sea otters, freaking sea lions, they're like dogs, but yeah. they just don't have long. Well, I don't hang out with enough otters to like, make that <laughs> Me like, either. comparison. Yeah. Sea lions, I mean, you know, yeah. they, they look like just dogs. Just assume they're otters. They could be sea lions. <laughs> don't just assume it's it's race. Yeah, that's it's racist against sea lions because they might be otters and you never know. Yeah, so, you don't want to just assume it's a yeah, sea well, lion. Yeah, if, if you go out there and you try to club a, a sea lion, like, is that the same as clubbing an otter, though? Wait, how like, the hell you are you say... going to club a sea lion? Like, where, what is a sea lion doing that you think you can get put a club to it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying is I would be confused. If I'm like, you which can one club am I clubbing? a sea lion, I think you earned it. Dude, if you could pull that off, like, I, like no one should be mad. Even the PETA people would be like, eh, that's impressive. Yeah. Well, well you never know, though, because, like, what if it's a pup, you know, sea lion, and you're like, oh, well, this is an otter, so I'm going to club it, but then it's a sea lion. So but you're like, you go to jail I, for... I did something terrible. But then, like, if it would have been an otter, would that would have been? No, it's not cool still, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Neither one of them. I mean, if cool. you ask an otter, I don't think they're cool with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody's cool with that. Not even the, I, if you ask a human, they're not Bro, cool this, either. I'm somehow not cool we're talking about clubbing animals now. This conversation's <laughs> yeah. getting crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. What do you want to talk about? Nah, man. Whatever, um, whatever comes up, man. I always remember uh, life. Hey, I like saying me, that sometimes. Tell me what you think about. Um, ask me. What's up? So, uh, you ever heard of this guy named, um, uh, and I'm going to forget the name, uh, the guy from uh, Los Alamos that released that uh, information about B- Bob Lazar. Um, Bob Lazar? Bob Lazar, yes. What he's do you the think UFO about guy, right? Yeah, he's the UFO guy. So, he used to work at Los Alamos, apparently, and he said that he, he went inside a, an actual Area UFO. 51, right? He was the Area 51 guy? No, I think it was Los Alamos that he worked at. But, Los well, Alamos yeah, no, has no, aliens? No. Yeah, no, Area 51. No, he used to work at Los Alamos, too. Oh, he's I see what you're saying. New I remember the name, and I because I know he's like the guy that talks about aliens. He's the guy that was an ex employee, and he says yeah. that he can prove, and yeah. he has like all this evidence. I don't know enough. I haven't looked into it. I'll tell you my opinion on aliens in general. Yeah, tell me about that. I and everyone says the same thing, right? There's for sure aliens. It's egotistical yeah. to not believe in aliens. I think we've all agreed the world is so big that there's a chance there's aliens, right? So the real yeah. question that we're asking is: Are there aliens here, or has there ever been aliens here? Yeah, uh, I think there hasn't. I think it's very – people are susceptible to uh, encouragement. I think uh, the most close that I've ever been to believing it is listening – have you ever heard the stories of, like, the uh, Air Force pilots that yeah. are flying oh, yeah. and yeah. they claim to see things? Like, dude, I've never seen anything yeah. move like this. Like, there's no spacecraft. That, yeah. Those are the ones because there's so many of them and they have no reason to lie that I kind of, like, feel weird about. But I do think that could be a technological thing. The bottom line is I don't know, but I don't think I've ever heard a story that I that, that I you were convinced with. that I couldn't feel like all right. There's a, you can explain that a little bit. Yeah, and there's so many stories that have come out that seem legit, and then later on it comes out like oh it was fake for sure, and they could prove it, and I'm like damn it. What about the, the like space in general though? Because I mean, and we're in the world, you know, people are tr- or, or we're talking about aliens possibly visiting Earth. But what about in the universe as a whole? Like our universe? Yeah, because Do if I you think really think about anywhere. Yeah, have you ever seen that video that um, it's like a video where they, they show like a map of like a house, right? And then it zooms out and it just keeps zooming out and then it shows the world. And then it shows the world in the solar system. And then it shows it like zooming out the solar system into the Milky the Way. Yeah. And then all this other thing. And you think about like how small the, we are. The, the, the Milky Way, which we, it's unfathomable. I mean, it's, it's a gigantic yeah. space to us. Is a very small space to the, to the universe in general. Yeah. What do you think about that? Like, do you think that there's aliens out there? Yeah, hell yeah, there is, and it's it gives me anxiety to think about it, man. Like, cause I always I, I always think like, dude, first of all, there's no way we're the only ones. My only thing is like, maybe neither none of us. When I say us, like whatever the civilizations are, maybe nobody's created technology to visit the other ones yeah. yet. But it, um, I don't know. Do I think there's another human race? Probably not. Do I think yeah. there's another race that's similar? Maybe. I just don't want to know. Like, I know that sounds weird, but like when you start thinking about those things, you start feeling unsafe. Um, and I like the safety of knowing what I know. Um, so I don't like the idea of it. But yeah, for sure. Like there's something out there, man. And I don't know. Yeah. Like, I just hope that we find them before they find us, man. But then I watch too many movies and I always, I think we, we associate it with like uh, powers and abilities and cool stuff. And it's yeah. like, like when you think of Superman who's an alien and stuff like that, in that sense, like, hell yeah, bring them on, man. Especially if you want to, Gonna recruit yeah. me for your superpower team. I'm definitely on that. Do you ever watch that movie District Nine? What is it called? District Nine. Yes, where he starts turning into like a roach or something, right? Or whatever like those a creatures shrimp. are. Yeah. <laughs> is it a shrimp? No, well, they call him prawns and 
yeah, British. He, something, and then now he can like he starts speaking their language, right? Yeah, yeah. I did see that. I thought that was he pretty has, weird. He, he starts with that arm, and then he's able to shoot the guns. Yes, cool because they coming. couldn't use the weapons, right? This but is... that's a cool concept because like they came here, and then we imprisoned them. Yeah, like we yeah. always assume the people coming are going to be way more advanced yeah, than we are, exactly. and we'll just take. And them they over. were, they they were, but they were just uh like. A I actually famine. remember how it ended. Well, it, it it actually they set it up for a for a um a sequel, but District I don't think, Ten. Yeah, I think we still kind of need 10. aid from the government. What if District yeah. Ten is about like a a family of those people that like like need like like food stamps and stuff and they're like we need more help <laughs> yeah or the world is like overloaded with too many people and too many of the aliens and everybody's trying to survive like even the poor That's... humans are like get it together like yeah, to that race yeah. you guys are idiots <laughs> you need to get jobs or they're like oh you know humans you you humans need to get it together you guys are always fighting wars we we're a peaceful civilization and then they enslave us you know what i'm saying because they're i mean that's always an option i don't want to be enslaved i yeah, definitely I enslaved. i'm not about that life i'm not about that enslavement have you ever seen the abyss yeah, a, a long time ago. That's the one where he goes down. It's like, an old movie. And then he takes off his his um his bubble thing. Uh, like didn't we talk below, about this right? recently? I no. talked about it with someone. No, it's literally, and I didn't even as I was telling it last time. I didn't remember the whole story, but it's essentially like these people go down in the submarine and they realize that because we're breathing in water when we're in the womb. Like, we don't have our first breath till we come out of the womb and we breathe air. Yeah. They go, we as human beings know how to breathe underwater. We just forget how to do it as children. This is a concept in the movie. So they actually learn how yeah. to, like, oh, submerge okay. each other, like, themselves in their water and, like, something happens and they yeah. focus or whatever. The and they end up breathing. No, for sure. Don't do it. Don't drown yourself. <laughs> that's not the way it works, man. But in the movie, <laughs> that's they... That's the way you get oxygen. So I think the baby. that's how they end up getting to the... You know how no one's ever been at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah. That they end up getting there because they go down and then they learn how to breathe under the water. And then they have this pressurized helmet full of water. That way it doesn't crush their heads. Yeah. And they learn how to breathe and they can go even deeper. And then they find a ship, I think. Essentially, I don't remember if they found a ship or it was their own ship that went too deep. Um, but it turns out at the bottom of the ocean is aliens but the aliens are the water. Like, the water itself is the alien. Like, there is no creature down there. So the alien ends up coming into the ship and, like, a little flubber-looking, like, thing. Yeah. And it ends up, like, talking to them through, like, telepathic stuff. It's crazy. And end up showing them. They can tap into, like, the rate, the television frequencies on Earth. They can tap into it, and they start showing them in the water, like, uh, that they're going to destroy the human race. And they, uh, they're sending this huge... Like, like the blob. biggest tidal wave in the whole world oh, okay. to like wipe out the whole world. It's like crazy. I don't remember how it ended, man, but I, I think they don't ruin the world, I would hope. But like it's crazy <laughs> they, to they think they talk that it out. They probably talk. It's well, crazy I mean, to think that here. the water is alien to us if we think about it. Like we've never been in the bottom of the ocean. This world is mostly oh, yeah. water. Yeah. Like so to think that there's not alien like things, depending on what you call aliens here, then then that's crazy. There's for sure something here that is alien to us. I believe that. Oh yeah. Well I mean, even if you think about it, because um, the the ocean itself is it's very unexplored, right? And because we don't have the, te the technology to go below a certain level. It's mostly the pressure, right? And yeah. then also the... the... It's mostly the pressure, right? Because they've sent machines down there yeah, that like, have gotten lost, right? So the, the, and then uh, there's no light at one point, right? That's how they found those weird fish yeah. with the lights. On but you head. can you can take a light down there, but it, it doesn't have very much of a reach, right? Because yeah. it's, it, the water gets cloudy and you know it's very, very dark down there. But really, the biggest thing is, is just the pressure. So the, the lower you go, the more pressure it exerts on, on anything. So if you go down all the way to the bottom, the pressure must be enormous, right? Like you have to make a ship like the most pressure in the that we've ever seen right yeah i like, i think they have scientifically sent, i think they have sent uh like machines down there that don't get crushed but us as humans have never explored it plus think about the size of the ocean i, I think i mean don't quote me on this but i think the ocean is larger itself than the amount of land that we have right so 100 yeah. percent. yeah i believe it is so think about the amount of land. Think about right now, for example, in the Amazon, there are still uncontacted tribes. Think about that. Yeah, we have sure. Wi-Fi. We've sent people to the moon, but yet here we in think Earth, we've sent people well, to the moon. we might have sent people. To, we might have just recorded them <laughs> in a in a studio. It yeah, <laughs> that, that, that one, that's a that's a dead dead horse that's yeah. gonna be very 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 uh, <laughs> very often by everybody. So. um but yeah, think about it. They're still uncontacted. Every time I hear about those stories, though, I think about like, are they un uncontacted? Is it uncontacted? 
Is that the right word? No, I think you're using the right word. Okay. Uncontacted, it sounds weird to me. Like um, uncontacted tribes, is it because we haven't contacted them? Or is it because we didn't know they were there because we haven't explored it? But I also think that there, I don't know, but I think that there's certain places where we just kind of agree not to go. Because I, I've heard stories about indigenous people that live in like a small island. And like we know the way that we would protect an endangered species. Oh, yeah. I think they've agreed like, hey, this is a tribe that we don't want to mess up. They have their own world. They don't even yeah. know what technology is. We're going to go ahead and leave them alone. Yeah. Um, because I've heard story, uh, Joe Rogan had a, on his podcast, there, there's a guy talking about like, they sent someone over there to like teach them oh, the and ways kill, and, and they he, killed that guy. And got, yeah. yeah. And they're like, dude, let's just leave those guys alone. <laughs> well, if you think about too, about the, um, like bringing over any kind of disease over there, you're bringing over polio or whatever it may be. They think the flu, the flu well, to us, to them, we're fucking aliens. Like, yeah. so they're like, what? And I, well, can, I, that guy probably showed up on a chopper. Let's be yeah. honest. He didn't boat out there. Yeah. And they're like, dude, this guy's driving a giant metal bird. Yeah. He's like, this guy is a devil. Easy, yeah, yeah. Like we don't know. Let's just kill him just in case. Like we don't know what the fuck he is. What are these pictures he's taking of himself? Yes. This is so advanced. So that so is crazy. Good. You make up a good point that there is parts that we haven't even explored here. And as human beings, like, how much do we really travel? Like, the only time I've ever traveled out of the U.S. was to Mexico. Yeah. And it's, like, culturally, like, that is different. Like, when we went on the cruise, me and Laura, and we went deep into Mexico, we were literally at the very bottom, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah. And it, it's culturally so different. And that's, like, continentally, we're still on the same continent. You know what I mean? So it's, like, it's very different, oh, yeah. and it's still here. Can you imagine, like, how different it is in other countries? On different continents and even further oh, yeah. and then god man it's so crazy and then we all think that ours is the right way because it's what we're growing up at i i i just think that the idea of an alien or some sort is like i don't even want to know man because i don't even know the people that live here yeah 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 oh, yeah. yeah there's so many people that that um that having or going back to that forming that opinion thing you think oh people in other countries are not as cool as us or like we do it the right way or like all this other stuff but in reality people are just people anywhere right they have maybe they're governed by bad people or good people blah 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 but people in general are pretty nice we're know? just products of our environment man i guarantee you if you lived in a foreign country you're going to start adopting some of their beliefs if you live there long yeah. enough you will start adopting oh, yeah. some of their beliefs because you want to fit in where we want to yeah. do that. Nobody yeah, wants yeah. to stand out. If you go to prison, and you start doing some things maybe you wouldn't have done because you want to fit in in prison. Yeah. That's do I totally want to get a, a, someone to come on the podcast that's been to prison. Yeah. have some people in mind. Um, <laughs> but I think that's a cool like concept, man. Like it's it, not that it's cool to go to prison, but it's, it's, it's a cool concept understanding when you take an individual and put them in another place, how does it change them? And then, have you ever have you heard of the Stanford Prison Project? Are you familiar with that at all? Yeah, oh yeah, I have. There's a movie and that's about interesting, it. Yeah. And then, because I just started school in January, one of our papers um, that I haven't written yet, which I should, by the way, yeah. um, we they make us watch this 30 minute clip of it, and I've already seen the movie, so I'm like, oh, thank God, like a paper on something I'm familiar with. Yeah. So I'm, it's recently fresh in my brain. But essentially, the Stanford Prison Project, for anyone that's unfamiliar with it, is I think it was back in the 90s, maybe even the late 80s, yeah. they decided to do a controlled study where they hired these Stanford students to play roles. Yeah. And the ad said, we want you for two weeks, and we're gonna, we want you to either be a, uh, an officer or an, or, or or an inmate. Prisoner. And the agreement was, when they would come in and like audition, the agreement was, you sign up for two weeks, you get paid as if you're working a job for two weeks. Don't remember how much it was. Probably not a lot for back then. Yeah. And it's real. Like, that's your role. You're in the role. You yeah. can't leave. That's it. Uh, and then you'll randomly get assigned COs and, and um, inmates. And I think they did personality, like, uh, cert, like uh, studies to see yeah. who they thought would be better COs. And essentially, it went fucking crazy, dude. If yeah. you ever have some spare time, watch the movie or the documentary yeah. on it. Essentially, what they did is, is um, on both sides these inmates started like they felt real like at one point like dude is yeah. this even an experiment anymore like an abuse, they treated them like yeah. shit they started abusing them yeah. they make them do push-ups they yeah. would take away their food things you would experience in a real prison if you're yeah. messing up the weird thing is the co's who are also actors got way too deep into their characters yeah. uh, like one of them they would call him um he had a name it was like an outlaw name like dirty harry or something i don't remember what they would call him but they started they nickname him this because he would just come up with punishments they didn't even ask him to do this. Yeah, he got so into character that he's like, like if someone like uh, wanted to leave or something like, or someone was in the hole, like, well, all you guys are going to get to vote. You're going to let him stay with you guys or 
you can give up your blankets, like they all had blankets. Oh, yeah. And we'll make him leave. Otherwise, we're going to keep punishing while he's here. So they made them pick. Do you want to get punished by losing your blankets? Do you want to get punished by kicking him out? And then I yell at you. Yeah. It was crazy. So they got in their heads. People end up quitting. They didn't even make it a week. I think on day seven, like the wife oh, yeah, of the were. main guy that was running the project came in to bring him lunch. And she saw him watching film, a uh, live film, like the live feed of what was going on. And the husband was like, check this out. And they had bags over their head. And like, oh, you yeah. pussy. Like, you you guys are all bitches. And the wife was like, oh my God, you're doing these to the students? Yeah, this is, they didn't this even make wrong. it a week. They ended up shutting it down. Yeah. But they learned so much from it, man, that it's crazy. The whole concept or the, the main thing that you need to learn is that you, when you take people, when you don't have a code of ethics, a main yeah, thing that we yeah. live by, right? Like human beings are human beings. We all have the right to a trial. We have the right to life. We have the right to pursue of happiness. All those things yeah. that we have, right? If you don't have any of those things, like it's it's chaos, it man. Chaos, and yeah, your energy, product of your environment, quickly. if you put someone in prison that is innocent, maybe, or maybe did a crime, but it wasn't as serious as some of the other criminals, you conform and you start doing the things of the people that are around you and you act differently in your product of that environment. You can't be the person you were out here. So when people yeah. get out of prison and they like people are always like, You're changed, man. Of course they've changed. They've been through some stuff. <laughs> I almost directly relate symbolically someone that got out of prison and someone who just came back from the military oh, it's yeah. very similar yeah they both talk about how they're away from everyone they miss their families we, i was treated differently i don't yeah. feel safe it's very similar yeah it's like definitely. it's weird yeah it's like uh i think that's crazy yeah and uh, and support the troops man i we love we love our 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 um troops and our our people that are in the troops or have been in the troops frank casey's uh, one of them um and i also have a cousin that's in the air force as well so um i've always wondered uh, going back to the prison um uh topic i'm gonna refill my water while you do yeah, that go for it. i've always wondered how many of the things that we see about prison are true right because a, a lot of people seem to think that prison is 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 a movie you know and there's these like factions and people are against each other and you got to form a clique and you got to be part of this clique. And then you got, once you join that clique, then you're there for the rest of your life. Like how much of that really is true? How much of it really, really, uh, well, that for sure happens. The, what part, what do you mean? What is true? Like, what well, part? because I, the reason I asked that, or the, the reason I wonder that is because there's a lot of people who come out who don't join a crew. Who don't join a clique, who, who go in there, do their time, and come out. They call them tweeners. This is why, like, like, it's if you don't, it happens, right? It's oh, not yeah, smart. It happens it's not sure. smart because you're very vulnerable. If you are someone respectful or you're in lockdown, and again, I hate talking about this because I've never been to prison, yeah. you get a little bit more respect. So it's you're right, but statistically, percentage-wise, almost everyone joins some sort of clique. Everyone that I know that was in prison prison you have joined to. a clique. Maybe if you go to jail, because they've been to jail. Oh, yeah. Jail, and, like, I mean, they'll respect it because you're gonna, maybe you're there for either a couple of days, a couple yeah. weeks. I think in order to be in a prison, it has to be over a year, I think. Anything, like, if it's, like, one to, to 11 months, you, you're only in jail. So it's, But, like, and people know that they're there. And so if you luck out, like, people respect that and you're fine. But almost everyone that I know that's been to prison, for sure, clicked up. Because there's benefits other than all those things. Like, you get access to tobacco. You get yeah. access to phone calls. You get access to protection. You get access yeah. to like yeah. other things. You get access to connections outside of prison if you're yeah. trying to help out your family. And so there's tons of benefits to click up. I think it turns into a thing where people watch too many movies and they yeah, think clicking up, you got to murder a dude. And maybe there is a prison where you have to do that. But I'm sure a ton of it is just like being smarter than the other person, right? Or or being know your role. When I say smart, I'm not literally talking about a nerdy white dude with glasses. I'm talking about someone who understands how my choices. What do you got against glasses, were, man? I said nerdy. You don't look nerdy at all. Yeah, you're, but I got glasses. You're a handsome dude with glasses. When Stop handsome people wear glasses, me. it's like, do you remember when I got that boner during my accident? Yeah. yeah. You're you were thinking accident. about somebody you're, you're with a, glasses. You're symbolically an accident, man. You, okay. People popping boners all over that's, the world right now. That's weird. I don't even know if you know that. That's really weird. You made this weird, that's, man. Uh, because oh, well, you made the nerdy. You, I appreciate it. It's, it, it's cool. I, you know. But it's, when you say yeah. smart person, there's this weird thing where people yeah. always picture a nerdy dude with glasses. But I always um, thought that it was more like in in prison. It was more about the the survival of the fittest, right? You're the biggest dog no, in, the, in the dog pound. There's so some losers that survive prison, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that, and that's, but it probably wasn't very fun. It goes back to that whole thing about like we got to get do... some prisoners in here. 
or at least yeah. a prisoner. Let's, let's not... go commit a crime and then we'll come back. We'll, no, we'll let's, come back to let's this. Let's definitely not commit any crime. <laughs> but let's. Uh, I, I think I, that I think that would be a, a great insight to get someone that's been to prison and can talk on it because yeah. I can see why. Like when people that I that I know talk about clicking up, like it yeah. makes a hundred percent sense to me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I always wonder if it's more about uh, like clicking up about. Uh, like a race thing or like a, like a power thing or like, well, it's usually or like both. a protection. From, from what I know from the people that I heard uh, from, if, uh, for instance, this one person I know was told, who's a white person, was told uh, you have the option because you're white. You can, you can click up with the white people, the Aryan Brotherhood. Or, or there's also a group of like Las Cruces people. Yeah. And so, so like that's the only, them. you either click up with your Las Cruces friends or the white people, but you can only pick one. Yeah. And naturally, if you're like have friends that are not white, you want to click up with your Las Cruces people because maybe you know some of them. Oh yeah, and you don't want to. But there's more create... power in clicking up with the white dudes. And I would assume it's the same thing with maybe a black guy from Cruces. They'd be like, all right, you're with the Cruces people, or you're with the the black people, whatever the black group is called. Same thing with Hispanics, same yeah. whatever, right? You either click up with your race, or you can click up with your city. Yeah, yeah. Um, at least from here, I know it's that way. And so, like naturally, I think if someone is doing like. Or either if they don't know or they do know they're going to be there for a while, they're clicking up with their race. Uh, but if they know they're not going to be there too long or there's a chance to get out, they, they click up with their city. Oh, yeah. Because these are like, I'm going to go back to that city when I get out and I need yeah, these connections. Yeah, I'm going to be there with all these people, yeah. So I think that's how sure. it works, but we should for sure get some yeah, some prisoners yeah. in here, man. Yeah, just a question I had or just a, something I always wonder about. It's it's interesting to think about. I have a question for you. I was thinking this the other day. <clears throat> Laura always gives me shit, man, because I watch these videos about murderers like or about crime and she's always like she got like i would watch them all the time i still do and yeah. so like, dude, if someone went through my youtube like history they'd be like damn like will's like, like yeah, he's well, gonna try to kill someone like he's yeah. been researching well, killers I, do. I watch them so much and i find them super intriguing and then i would watch them so much i play them and i play video games and i'll play them like on my phone and i'll listen to them because i'm auditory and so i can kind of keep up with what's going okay. on in the okay. thing i love them like i love them yeah, Not, i don't like murder but like I like hearing people's stories, like the Aaron Hernandez one that, that oh, came out on yeah, Netflix. Oh yeah, that was a trip. Man. I haven't seen it, yeah. but I'm gonna see it. Oh, the you Menendez should. brothers. I saw that one. I like the confession tapes of the the yeah. dude uh, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. Yeah. yeah, all of them. Man. All of the BTK killer. Like I follow all of them. Yeah, even uh, um, Zodiac. The movie and the, the documentary. Yeah, the Zodiac is very. They never caught that guy, dude. Yeah, they had. I think he died. It. It's supposed to be Ted Cruz, right, or his dad. <laughs> Ted Cruz is the Zodiac. Ted killer. Cruz. You yeah. heard it live here. Yeah. I'm talking about Ted Cruz is yeah. the Zodiac killer. No, yeah. but I love watching those shows. And then Laura at one point is like, "Hey, I'm kind of worried about you." Like, yeah. and I'm like, "What? You think I'm gonna kill someone?" She's like, "No, I'm just like worried about how it affects your head because she knows that I already struggle with death, like as an anxiety." Yeah. Um, but that was kind of the backstory on it. With that being said. I'll ask you a question and you can answer it however yeah, you want. Go for it, man. I hope you never kill me. Okay. I hope you never kill anyone. Okay. But if you had to kill someone, if if you knew if someone the a guy came down and he's like, I could tell the future, you you have to kill someone. It's the yeah. only way you get into heaven or whatever. I know it's a weird thing. Wherever you're gonna go, wherever the afterlife yeah. is, you like you just have to do it. Well, how do you how do you think you would do it? How would you do it? How would you do it? Not who would you kill, but how would not you not who? Because I think that would could get weird. We could maybe explore that afterwards. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, like who who would you kill historically, you would want to kill people who are bad, right? Like like Hitler. Everybody wants to ki kill. So Hitler let's say it's, let's don't pick a person because I don't want it, I don't want it to be weird. How, what would, what would be your way? It could be anything. Let's say it's a dude at uh, at Kmart who's a bad guy. He's you know he's been molesting kids or something. <laughs> Kmart. So you're going to kill this Kmart Kmart closed. That's why they closed the, yeah. yeah cuz that's why it's cuz of that guy, yeah. Perfect store to pick yeah, yeah. So you had to kill this Kmart employee. How yeah. would you do it? Uh well, I mean, I'm not uh, as much as uh, we all like to be uh like vicarious and and think that you know, like watching the the movie the the, the murderer movies, right? You know, mm -hmm. you want to understand and you kind of want to live vicariously through them, but you know you wouldn't do it, do it yourself because it's it's just no, not. But you in have your... to in this scenario. Literally, I want you to walk me through this. Well, yeah, I'm I'm getting there. So um, <laughs> you're all trust yeah, me. Yeah, so I, I know how to kill some people. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't personally um, choose to torture a person, right? If I was gonna do it, I would do it very quickly, like okay. with a gun or uh, you know something very quick and easy, right? If I had to, had to, just so because. Do you think you would go gun then? 
Yeah, probably. I mean, with, it, it's with, easy. With the Kmart person? You think, do you think that you could shoot someone like to kill them, like in the head? Are you oh, capable shit. of that? I, maybe. I don't know. I think we're all capable of it. But I think we, we're all capable we are... if we're properly motivated. Like if it's a family member, we might do things. Let's roll out the out of emotional, right? Because that, yeah. most killings are like, yeah. oh, you yeah, upset passion, man. I just yeah, shot him. Yeah. Like, let's roll it out. You, ha- like, you have to think this through because you just know you have to kill it. So you got to premeditate it. Yeah, so it's not emotional. It's like you need to, if you're going to shoot someone, you know. You yeah. got to pick the gun out. You got to like be, you have to deal yeah, with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you think you could shoot someone? If I was, if it, it all depends. I mean, this is a cop out, right? It all depends on the, what the person did. And he what, was a child molester from Kmart. But who am I to be the judge and execution? But for right? whatever weird reason, the scenario you have to be. Well, then I would. You would. You would. I you mean, you, you have to. If, if I have to in this situation, then yeah, I would. I would prepare my gun, you clean you it out real good, stab someone. Yeah, that's a little bit more visceral. I think it's a more hit or miss. So. Do you think you light someone on fire? No, uh, that's terrible. Damn, that's terrible. that'd be a tough one, huh? Yeah, that'd be a tough. Here's one. my thought. Just because I, it's not instant. I Imagine. was thinking the other day, so I, I ruled out knife right off the bat. That was the first one I ruled out because I don't think I could do that, man. I like people. I, I yeah. have like like in general, even bad ones. Oh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> like, that's where I am. At. And I so, mean, like, I for sure can never stab someone, and I'd like to think I could, right? If it came down to it, if someone was hurting my family, and all I had was a yeah, knife. Of course, but yeah. if I really am being honest, I cannot be honest. I cannot picture myself stabbing someone. So yeah. stabbing is ruled out. Yeah. Even if it's a like a sword. I feel like I could. Not that that's like an option. <laughs> I don't even think I could sword somebody. Even if it was like a guillotine. Like Conan man, like... sword. Like, no, nah, I don't even think I could do it. A ballista. So that's out. I don't think I could stab anyone. Um, and then I thought about shooting someone. And my first thought is kind of what you said. That's like a good way Excuse me, to kill someone. You could just shoot them and it's over with. I don't know if I can do that either. So, so I put that as a maybe. I thought maybe I could shoot someone. And I'm talking intentional, right? Obviously, spur of the moment. Anything yeah. Happen. I don't think I can intentionally shoot someone. I don't think I'm capable of it, right? And I'm just no. being honest. And I hate saying this where the whole world can hear because, like, dude, I'm going to rob that guy. There's, he's not even going to shoot me. Like, I know he just did yeah. it. So please don't rob me. But, but see, so, in spur of the moment, you would do it, though. That's Maybe. That's your, maybe. Yeah, but I for see. sure, like, so I, we'll put gun as a maybe, knife as a no. But then I got to the next one, and I'm like, ding, ding, ding. I think I could poison someone. And poison? I, yes. <laughs> I think I could poison, poison someone. And then, so my first thought was, like, where do you even buy poison? Because it's not like a, a packet, like a, a, a skull and bones, like <laughs> this is poison on it. Like you, so I started thinking, like, well, how would I poison? And from watching those videos, I know that you can kill someone with antifreeze or Drano oh, yeah. like by pouring in there. Um, there's, like, different things that you can do. I don't think that I would ever – first of all, I don't think I would kill anyone. But if I had to, right, in that situation, and it had to be premeditated, meaning I had to think about it, I, I settled on the only way – because I thought about fire, like I could set someone on fire yeah, in the home. That's, that's Can't do that. I don't even know how to like start a fire in my backyard for fun. Like, I don't think I could light. <laughs> so no knowing me, I like light a fire and the wind would blow it out. And I'm like, damn it! And they would, like call the cops and I get arrested for arson. There's, there's lighters for that. Will. And I'd be in prison like a bitch trying to click up. So they're like, "What are you in here for? Murder? What about you, Will? I tried to start a fire, but <laughs> the wind blew it out. It. <laughs> and they caught me, and I'm in here for arson. No, oh. so I ruled that one out. Um, what else? Or without drowning, I don't think I could physically drown someone. No, that's that's. I that's could. Hard. I did think I could tie like a, a weight to someone's foot and throw them off in the ocean. I could probably do that. But then I thought, like, because of the pressure thing, the weight would eventually just fall off and the body would float up and you'd get busted, right? Because if well, that was a thing, more people would do it. No, but, I mean you could use something that's very, very uh, sturdy, like a chain, right? I mean you could chain somebody's legs to something heavy and that would not break. No way. What about? It would have to be like a. If it's anchor. a rope, if it's a flimsy rope, if it's like a. 10 year old rope that was out in the sun it's like a yeah. really nice chain and like a like a block of cement you think it would be good oh yeah yeah all right, so, so maybe that think one. about it if you if you don't wrap it around their their like feet but you wrap it around their their torso there's nowhere it could go right wrap it around the torso like an x yeah about that one. because the feet could eventually yeah it could slip off right or it could rip off if I'm being cynical. If it goes down pretty deep, you have to think the pressure catches up. Yeah, well, there's I a mean, chance it could rip, right? If, if there's air in the lungs. I can't believe we're breaking this down right now, dude. But I feel like well, that... So you're right. It would ha- You would have to wrap around the Wrap waist, around man. the torso. Yeah, and it's and it's very... So maybe I mean, now. It's a visceral thing. I think I settled about. on poison. If I had to kill someone, I think I might try to poison them. But think about it that the society that we live on is so fragile and in human life in general is so fragile and i get to see it at work there's just so many small little things that could 
kill you right and you, we talked about this earlier you know people have died for way less than falling off a motorcycle right uh, you could get hit in the temple in the right spot and you're dead or you could uh you know what? be you could literally be walking down or hiking down fall off you know the hike or whatever land on a cactus that has a really long uh, and that could puncture, and it you could just puncture the right your way, lung right? or your your heart. Yeah, that's dead. a good point. That's why I stopped watching Thousand Ways to Die, yeah. man, because it made me freaked out about basic everyday stuff. I'm like, well, oh, geez. think about it. If you're in your bathroom and your floor is slippery and you slip and you land right, you could break your neck and you're dead. So, what do you think? Let, let's switch over. We we talked about the funnier side <laughs> of, of of death, right? Which, again, please don't kill me. Now that I know that <laughs> you're willing to me. shoot somebody, <laughs> at least if I kill you, poison you, or throw you now, off I, I taught you how to actually drown somebody so don't do it you know now that i know yeah, you're right with great don't. power comes great don't. responsibility anytime you're around a really change, smart you know, guy just, said that just... his name's uncle ben <laughs> from spider-man spider-man one um <laughs> I don't no know exactly. moving over into the more serious stuff because i'm i'm glad that this is one of the reasons that i want to talk to you about because you you're a nurse right yes um and so what do you think talk going off kind of what you said what do you think and we'll be serious about this what is the first of all have you seen people die in there? I have, yes. If you had to put a number, just uh, how much would you say? Since you've been of other people it? that I've seen die, yeah. In my in Except, my career, it's not a super high number. It's about ten, maybe fifteen. That's high compared to most. Well, compared to most people, yes. But in the environment, like, that I'm we not live a nurse, by. and I think I've seen like literally seen killed or died or bodies, like maybe six. Yeah, I think so, and I, I mean, think mine's seen... high. So yours is pretty high. So it's fair to say that you're you've been around death enough to talk about it a little yes. bit, right? What do you think is the strangest one? And obviously, don't give out this person's details. But what do you think is like one of those scenarios that you're talking about, where like, damn, like life is precious. You never know. Can you think of someone where you're like you heard their story and it was like, is it? Is there any weird ones like that, or is it basically like like cancer got them or they got shot or something like that? That's usually the case, unfortunately, is that um, people have, and f I'm going to say this in, in, a, in a weird way, but it's fortunately people who are older. No, I'm, not saying, really? I'm not saying fortunately. No, I, I actually get thing, what you're saying there. But yeah. it's because at least that person has gotten to live their life, you know, no matter how they live their life, uh, if they have gotten to live their life. I, I haven't, uh, I originally, when I started to be in a nurse, I wanted to go into the NICU, right? Uh, neonatal intensive care unit. Uh, and I realized. Is that, is that children? Yeah, or? well, babies. Okay. Yeah, like PQ newborns. is um, um, pediatric or, you know. The, what counts as pediatric? Like, how old is. I don't know. I think it's like six months or. Six months and younger? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm not really sure. That's not my field. But, um, but that's what but you wanted to go into. I wanted to go into that because I thought that it would be uh, something that was um very helpful right because you're i mean unfortunately when you're helping somebody that's that is older there is a lot of issues that you can't fix right there i mean age you can't fix you can't fix yeah. age uh but a baby you can give him a better chance of survival right but i just couldn't deal with uh one the the complexity of of, of children but two the loss of of uh of an opportunity right now that's good. that's uh, kind of uh, confusing in my own psyche because I'm pro-choice, um, but once the baby's born, then me as a nurse, I just couldn't, I just couldn't deal with that. That and I don't like giving baby shots or uh, children shots because that's. So that's did you do it and not like it, or you never did it? I never did it. Well, I did do it as a. Um, as a clinical day, which mm -hmm. is what you do in uh, during nursing school, so you go through going through nursing level. school helped you realize that it, that it isn't what you wanted to yeah. do. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Going through nursing school and then going through classes, so understanding like the background, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the book smart part. Um, it made me understand that I didn't really want to do that because I don't have the. Um, well, you have to be passionate about what you do too, and I just didn't yeah. have a passion for I'm that. I'm glad. I'm glad that you were able to recognize that because not a lot of people do. I think they hop into yeah. the thing that they think they want to yeah. do because they've already committed to it. So I think yeah. it's really cool that you, you actually took the time to realize like, Hey, I don't know if this is my passion. Yeah. So what happened after that? Did you switch your passion or where, where did that go? Well, I, uh, at that point I was, uh, kind of like, 
I had a broad horizon and I could go any way I wanted, right? I could have just went into blah, blah, blah and, mm -hmm. and been just fine if I would have chosen that path. I could have went into psych. I could have went into, um, uh, I don't know, ICU or telemetry or medical surgical or any other really uh, kind of path you can follow to make your, your nursing career. Um, but I always wanted to be in ICU, even though it scared the crap out of me. And, and the reason it scared the crap, but crap out of me is because I didn't understand that it is a learned, um, it is learned, uh, like path. Are you in the ICU now? I am in the ICU. I started okay. in the ICU. So, but this is what I always thought. And this is what I think most people think when they graduate nursing school, they think, oh my God, the ICU is for the smartest people right the people who get the best grades in college the people who are doing the best right but in reality when you're in the icu is the book smart is only part of it uh you have to have something else the passion for it the understanding of what's going on within the human body uh the 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 risks that you are that you are creating or that you're uh, preventing by titrating a, a sedative or uh, uh, providing a patient a, a vasopressor that's, that's going to bring up their blood pressure at the expense of something else, like, you know, uh, clamping off areas of the body that, that are too small to handle mm -hmm. a vasopressor. Right? So you, there's a lot of things that you have to understand that are learned. Um, so at the beginning, when I started in the ICU, I thought, oh, my God, this is the scariest thing ever because I always thought, like, again, the people that go into ICU are the smartest people. Right. And I didn't see myself as that. I thought, oh, I'm just average. I, I feel like a lot of people fall into that. Right. In that category, when you're doing something, anything, you don't see yourself as great. You only get the recognition from people. When you get the recognition, then you're like, oh, but and then still sometimes inside. when people give it to you, you still don't believe it. huh? Yeah, exactly. So that so that's where I where I'd fallen on that. Um, you asked me about the, what was the, the 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 weirdest kind of most um, strange yeah, can you think of can you think of something? To, I guess like is there either a story? And obviously, again, you can give as much details as you want. But is there something? The reason why I care about this is because I I have a death anxiety almost. But when yeah. I hear stories about stuff, it actually makes me feel safer. Which going back, and I won't carry too off because I want to hear your answer. Going back to those stories about like the murderers and stuff, it brings me comfort to know that I now have the information about how to avoid a situation like that. Yeah. And so in a weird way, because I struggle with all the people that have died in my life. Yeah. Uh. Hearing different stories brings me comfort to know that I now gain some new knowledge from it. Um, so I guess that's why I'm asking. And if there isn't one, that's fine. But can you think of something like this well, person came in for this, this, and this, 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 and this happened. This is how it ended up. Yeah. So I have one that's, that's, uh, it was my, my, personal first one um in the ICU? that i experienced well maybe i had experienced some before but none of them were uh directly involving me right uh i had a patient that that was having really bad um uh they had a a mass in their in their stomach um and it was very quick uh, the patient came in you know uh, 30 minutes later, the patient was, was coding. We had to code him. And unfortunately, the patient uh, was um, what we call a full code. So we had to go through the whole motion, even though this patient was very, very weak. I don't like, I don't like to, to um, it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of people don't understand the severity of a patient's like illness that they will push to the bitter end to to maintain a possibility of that person getting better unfortunately there is some people who are not going to get better it's just the truth right because we are as a healthcare um the professionals we don't have magic wands we can't fix everything well we can control a few things a few yeah. things that we can control we definitely try to control as best as we can but there are some things that are out of control and they just can't be fixed and people will pass right i mean that's unfortunately the nature of it so this patient came in he was very 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 sick uh the best we can do it at that point because we didn't understand what that what was going on at that point there's no way to know this patient's been there for 30 minutes right there's no way to know like how to treat Is this. this an older person oh yeah how old yeah. would so, you say he was uh, about 60s mid 60s right yeah. so not extremely old but not very young so uh, this person came in, they came in very, very uh, pain. They were in extreme pain. 
Um, I gave him some pain medication, and then we had to unfortunately code the patient because they started uh, not being able to breathe properly, and unfortunately they passed. And this is something that we experience a lot in the ICU, is that um, people uh, are very, very sick, and thus you have to do these extreme things to keep them alive, right? You got to bring in the the vasopressors you got to do intubations you got to uh bring in sedatives and and uh, high um uh, very potent uh medications to keep people alive so those are all the things that that we kind of uh going back to the beginning of my of my story about being a nurse is that a lot of people don't understand or don't think that they can do this and i count myself as one of them but it's a learn. It's a learn uh, process. It's a process to learn to be an ICU nurse. What, I'm very um, grateful for the people that I work with. They are all awesome, and I think that that's the biggest reason why I feel like I am successful in the first place in the ICU. It's because we have a really good team that supports each other. So when you, when that person you said was one of the first people, right? One of the first people that I've experienced in my direct area. So what did you, what did, how did it make you feel when that person passed away? And then what did your coworkers do to help you through it? Uh, well, we have, like I said, we have a really good support system. So they always, the first thing that, that they do is ask you, are you okay? Are you all right? Are you doing okay? Do you need anything, right? That's that's the base. Like they're asking you this. They're asking this you is directly. superiors or just same Everybody. level? Everyone. They Everybody. Want to make sure. Just because it's no matter who you are and no matter who the person was, no matter who the person was or how old they were, it's a traumatic experience every time. Was right. it traumatic for you? Of course, yeah. And every so every it, one of them is because you don't want people to die. As a nurse, it, and of course, did you feel like you could do more? Like, did you get that same feeling like you do maybe the, when a friend passes away? At or the at the initial reaction when the person passes, yes, and you feel like that every time. You feel like, what else could I have done? Yeah. But then you come to the realization afterwards that hey, you know, I couldn't have done more. This was gonna happen eventually. And that's that's just a pro, prolonging. And that's, again, unfortunately, one of the situations in the ICU is that people are in there and sometimes they're in there too long because uh, the family or their friends or, the, or whoever doesn't want to let them pass because they have a hope that the patient will get better. But unfortunately, like I said, on some situations, that's just impossible. Are there situations where they do get better? Oh, yeah. Well, people in the ICU get better all the time. Yes, definitely. I mean, I would say 90, 95% of the people that go to the what ICU What would you say is a sign? Get better. First of all, if you don't know, say that. But do you think there's something, as someone who works with this a lot, right? Let's say I had a family member that's like struggling and they're in the ICU. Maybe yeah. they're in there often. I don't know how the ICU, ICU works. If I'm someone that's considering, because a lot of times the family has the power to decide if yeah, this yeah, person's going to fight exactly it or go happens. home and, and die in peace, yeah. right? Yeah. Is there something that we should look out for like uh is there a thing or is it kind of a gambler every time is there something like hey if if they're this way then and they want to let them go home in your opinion or is it always should you always fight for every single person what do you think what's your opinion on that? no i don't think you should fight for every single person so it's what very, would be the way to know it's a very individual case the way to know is to listen to the to the healthcare team as a whole right more than you're listening to the person like let's say it's my dad and he's dying and he says, do not let me die. Like, I just want to be around. Oh, and the, I'm emotionally attached to that. But let's say the doctor's like, hey, man, he, like, no one, no one comes out of this. So like, there, who should I listen to? There's, a, there's a, uh, an option in there. Because I'm not saying everybody should just let him all go. No. If you want to continue, that's up to you. Yeah, you want to push it to the... I think I kind of know that. But I guess I'm mostly pointing to the part of, like, if someone's struggling, if the power is in their hands. Is there a way to know, or do you just kind of go with your gut? Like, what's your personal feeling about that? What's my personal feeling? Yeah, what would you, what would you, let's say literally it's me. You're talking to me right now. If my dad's dying, you know that people with whatever he has never make never it. Make never it. make it. And I'm like, dude, I don't want him to die. Like, I don't want him to die. I need him. And he asked me it's, to keep him around because I want to have a connection with him. It's what, our, what would you tell me? It's our personal duty as healthcare um, professionals to let you know things how they are. Mm -hmm. Exactly how they are. Like no not matter emotional, how, no like matter you just how say, these blunt. are the facts. What do you well, want to do? emotion plays a part in it afterwards, right? You know, I know you're do, you're you're going through whatever you're going right now. This is you know gonna be very hard, and I understand you a hundred percent. But I want to tell you really the truth because I'm not here to give you any lies or, or to make to make it seem something that it isn't, right? 
That's our duty. I have to tell you that. But let's say you weren't my nurse. You were literally just my friend, but you have your same mind. Yeah. What would your advice be to me as a friend? As a friend? If you, as a friend. If literally, like, my dad's dying, and you know the things you know, but you, want, say, you want to talk to me about it. I would say this, what would you is tell a, me? this is based on the, the information. This is the best course of action, right? You know, he's going to need this. He's going to need that. And I'm talking about, like, uh, specifically about uh, end-of-life care, when you're talking about... Um, giving the patient uh, like morphine and Ativan, pain control, do anxiety you, control, stress control. Do you feel Those comfortable the telling the people that you love, whether it's your friends, family, or whoever, do you feel comfortable telling them the hard truth? Or do you think that you're the type of person yes. that tells them what they want to hear? No, I tell them the hard truth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's harder for you to tell somebody the, the like try to comfort them because if it's not true, then it brings... It creates a situation where you feel like you're you're lying to them, and that it, it, it weighs on you emotionally. I don't like to feel that way because mm -hmm. it's not it's not um, beneficial to me. It's not beneficial to anybody else. It is what it is, and it's required. Like I said, it's necessary for me to for me to go in there and tell them, hey, you know, this is the situation. So I, I I'll put you I'll put in perspective. If it was a family member that was my family member. I would still say it the same way because I want that person to uh, to uh, have most comfort. Comfort to me is the most important at that in that situation. For the person that's in the yes, ICU, for yeah. the person itself, because because a lot of times the family doesn't have a choice, right? Like if a person's of sound mind, they're making their own medical choices, yeah. right? If they're but in there, hardly ever. If they're already getting that close to to passing, then then they don't have a, a uh, uh, like an option to to um, they, they don't have the ability to to say it themselves like if they're intubated for example because they have like a respiratory failure or something what does like that. that mean that means that they put a tube down the throat so you can breathe yeah so they can breathe what is it's, that called again it's a it's a intubation, intubation. and a ventilator gotcha. yeah so um when you're in that type of situation you're sedated you got your pain control and stuff like that like obviously you're not going to be able to make your own decisions so that's why you have a power of attorney or you know somebody who's take, taking care of you um in that type of situation and it's usually that type of situation that most people die it's that they, they're already at that point where they just can't maintain their own homeostasis right they just can't their body just can't stay alive and they're alive uh artificially with chemicals and, and drugs and machines right so in that situation i would like to tell a family or i, I if it was my own family member i would say keep them comfortable give them pain control, give them anxiety control yeah. because there is a, a point where you get, you get to where you're not coming back. And that's just the truth. Do you, do you ever get nervous that you'll get desensitized to death? Like, because you've been around it. Like, so whenever you lose a family member, like maybe it's easier than it should be. And you, it, maybe you won't feel the way you should feel. Do you ever get nervous about that? Or has it even mm, crossed your mind? I, I don't get nervous about it. I, I feels comfortable to understand it better. You know okay, I mean? like, that's an interesting it's a, it's perspective. A, I didn't think of that. It's comfort for me. So you to feel know. like I'll understand better because I've been through it so much. The yes. way maybe. Well, I understand the futility of of uh, of some things. You know, I can't. yeah. No, I get what you're saying. And a lot of people don't because they're not in my situation. But I understand uh, doing this or doing that is really not gonna prolong uh, their life in a meaningful way, right? They're mm -hmm. not really gonna up and walk out of there and you know go for a marathon or anything right that, that's that's just unrealistic so understanding it makes me feel more comfortable because i know i feel like i always get like a i feel like i have that now like i feel like i'm desensitized like to to stuff it's so bad that like when i lose a friend or a family member um i i struggle with like feeling like i struggle with feeling about yeah. it and then i also feel like um I've lost so many people that when I think about one person for a long time, I feel guilty that I'm forgetting about the other ones. Um, like my dad passed away and I'll, I'll get sad yeah. about it sometimes, but then I'll remember my, my friend Marco that passed away. Yeah. And then I'm like, damn it. Like I should, like he, he was more recent. I should focus on him. Then yeah, I'll think about yeah. him. And then I'll think about like one of my aunts that passed away. Um, and so like it, it'll happen to the point where like it, it gives me anxiety, man. But I, think about it this way though. Um, it's, in, it's impossible for you to remember every person at all times, just the same way you, you don't remember 
anything at all times really like there is no way for you to focus on everything at the same time because that creates a, a big giant cloud of worry over yeah. your head you just have to understand that you you're living your life to the best of your abilities and you are these things that have in the past like hurt you or brought you um pain um you are healing because they're not as present anymore right even though they are important in your life you never lose the importance you always have to realize that they're um they're passe you know things are gonna pass everything i think what you're saying makes perfect sense and if i could not feel that way i definitely yeah, would yeah. it's, so, it's easier said than done i mean this is all yeah and it's like and well i like hearing it because it, it brings me peace right because i understand that but i always i get nervous because right now it's manageable um but i i feel like i never want to get to a place where i lose someone and i'm like i don't like feel at all like yeah. i'm so scared of that man like that it's like uh i have to take time to spend I have to spend and put time aside for the people that I've lost. So yeah. I do take time and think about one person. I try to remember them. Um, I think maybe if I really want to do that, I should do something to like remember them. Um, but I definitely take the time to think about it. And it's helping a little bit, but I have a huge fear that one day I'll lose someone close to me and I won't be able to cry or do anything. And like I, I fear that. But that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, a natural reaction like to be able to cry, for example, it's not necessary for you to uh, understand or for you to feel pain, right? You don't have to cry for you to actually have pain. Yeah, but, but I think crying is reaction. important. It's the way if you if you uh, think your body and your 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 reactions to things sometimes it's it's anatomical. Like your body, like biologically, you do certain things, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like the kid in school. Remember when they would go, oh, and then you'd flinch, and like you're a bitch. That's like, dude, that's a human reaction to flinch. Yeah. Can you imagine a, a UFC fighter that didn't react to a punch? And they just get like, punched. Yeah, they get knocked out, man. It's it's smart to react. But yeah. it's like one of those things where like, and obviously I'm using it as a metaphor, it is, I think it's normal and the right thing to do to cry when you're sad and to sometimes cry when you're happy. There's times where you laugh and there's times when you don't. What I'm saying is I fear that I, because of that, that I may get dense, desensitized and then like maybe one day someone will pass. And uh, and I'll just like not have anything left. Let I, me ask, I, I, that shit frightens me. Let me ask you something a little bit deeper than that. Ask me. Do you think that your fear is not being able to, able to cry in front of people, or are you fearing not being able to cry on your own? Like, oh, I don't alone? cry in front of anyone. I have so some people know. I, no. I, and it, I, do ne I never actively go, I don't want to cry in front of people. I don't care. Yeah. If I feel like crying in front of people, yeah, I'm going to cry. cry. But I just never get there. I think as men, we naturally do that a little bit more. Yeah, and I think me, push. as a man, and on an individual level, I do it even less than regular men. And so there's times where Laura's even told me, like, dude, like I kind of wish you would cry because then I would know you're sad. It comes out in other ways. It comes out in anger. Sometimes yeah. it comes oh, out yeah. in frustration. You know what I mean? When someone hurts my feelings, I'm genetically designed to like hurt them back sometimes not physically maybe i crack a joke back or say an insult or something yeah, yeah. um and so i never get to that point where i feel it there is times man but it, i'm learning that like a it, more and more recently it's becoming more um like i have to take the time to force myself to have a moment to eventually feel and it's like uh, and sometimes it involves crying um and so i don't fear it but like my body does it less than it used to and so I'm like, damn it. The way someone's body would naturally yeah. get used to the air in the desert, maybe you don't have allergies as much. I think my body's getting used to death that it's forgetting to react. And so I struggle with that because I don't want anyone to feel left out. And then yeah. when people pass away, like you're supposed to mourn them. You're supposed to feel certain things. And like sometimes I find myself feeling those things less and I get scared that I'll lose that part of me. And I don't want to. Like I, I hold on to that pretty dear. I was thinking this, this is a good segue because I was thinking of uh, – since we're on the death topic, um, the Kobe Bryant thing, because we talked about yeah, this a oh, little yeah, bit. Yeah, so yeah. Kobe Bryant passed away um, last Sunday, I believe, or last weekend, was, this last weekend, yeah, um, from a helicopter crash. It was crash on my birthday, actually. Over Calabasas, yeah. Calabasas, yeah. yeah. And it's like uh, I was helping a buddy, Abby, uh, move. He was moving into his new house. Um, and then a, a, another person came out and said, hey, Kobe Bryant died. And I'm like, whatever. That's not real. Did you check it? Because that's the, I, see stuff, I saw one time that like uh, Nicolas Cage died. Yeah. Like everyone was like, "Oh my oh, god!" Yeah. Like, and then I, I heard that about. And then the I googled show. it, and he didn't die. It was just some weird post. And so I'm like, "Dude, you, you got caught." And then I googled. Or, first of all, I googled it, and tons of stuff showed up. But then I went to my Facebook, which I hadn't looked at because I was moving, yeah. and, and everyone was posting, posting about it. I'm like, yeah. "Oh!" And because TMZ broke the news, 
And so yeah. that's why I was like, oh, this isn't real. It's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started seeing it. And then my buddy that I'm with, Abby, is a diehard Lakers fan. And I'm talking like a Lakers Lakers fan. Um, which I'll give Lakers their credit. Most Lakers fans are actual Lakers fans. Like they've yeah. liked them for a long time because the Lakers have been good for a long time. So I don't mean to say that, but this guy is a huge Kobe Bryant fan. Like I remember him excited, his um his um wife, girlfriend, I don't even they're not they're not married for sure. They may be engaged. Significant um, other. Damn, he's gonna hear this podcast and like, well, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. His lady was uh took a, got him tickets uh I don't know if she got him or he got him. essentially they went to see him because he announced it was his last year so he saw oh, okay. Kobe play in when person he, he was a huge fan of his and so you can tell like whenever he found out he was a little bit taken back by it and my first thought was not that it was silly I remember think I think he made a comment like man like it's weird man I feel hurt like I feel like crying like and we were joking about it but yeah. I could tell like he was a little serious oh yeah, yeah. and then but it, I didn't think it was dumb at all like I because I was like man like when someone's your influence, they're your influence, and it's oh, yeah. important. And so when Kobe Bryant passed, he was really hurt by it. And then you start seeing the reactions of the other people that knew him, like literally like famous yeah. people. And then I started remembering, I was a huge Michael Jackson fan as a kid, yeah. and people made fun of me for it. And then he died. And then I, my I, friends called me at my job, and they're like, hey, man, are you sitting down? I was like, what? Dude, Michael Jackson died. Yeah. And we joked about it way back in the day when he died but i really was hurt and i remember thinking like no one's gonna understand this dude like this dude yeah. and michael jackson did not have the best reputation oh, he yeah. was oh, going through that. all that child stuff and so like it was weird to be a michael jackson fan he dies all of a sudden everybody's a michael jackson fan and it was kind of weird yeah. but i remember that feeling of like man like this is one of my idols i liked his music i liked how that he was empowering i liked that he talked about like color um being someone who was really black and then his skin lightened but he's still a black guy and he struggled with both sides i always respected that yeah i always think that you know what i mean i always thought that was interesting him as a person he's a cap uh captivating figure you know what i mean he would yeah he would dance and people would faint in his concerts man I'm yeah, like, god yeah. how powerful is this Super one man talented. that that guy was just ridiculously talented at what he did definitely i mean singing dancing but it's weird how we value that because we relate it to things that we can't do almost yeah and so kobe was this guy and then so kobe passed away i kind of saw that and then um i think and then and of course we find out later the first thing was that I felt bad for his family because they're going to grow up without oh, him. Yeah, and that's... then we found out that his daughter was on yeah, the helicopter yeah, too, true. a thirteen-year-old daughter. Um, and when that came out, it was like two hours later after Kobe. Yeah. And then my first thought was like, "Oh, that that broke me harder." If it's, I'm being yeah, honest, yeah. as not a Kobe fan, like I should say, not a Lakers fan, um, I was kind of sad. But then I was super duper sad when I found out about his daughter. Yeah. And then I remember thinking, like, dude, like I, maybe more of his family because there's nine passengers and I'm, so i just kept waiting oh I'm yeah like, i thought i initially when i found out of when i found out i thought it was his whole family i thought they were all together in the in the helicopter i'm thinking like oh he has four daughters i remember and thinking a, and i I'm think like, this wow. has more to say about me and I, I i hate saying this out loud but i have to be honest when i found out it was him and his daughter i remember thinking god this sucks for the family and then i remember thinking in a weird way like i hope his whole family was in the plane because at least they all get to go to heaven together. Yeah. Like, so I, I, and I know that's a weird thing to say. I don't no, know. I, I understand it. But I remember thinking, and then when I found out it was just him and his daughter, I felt really bad for the family. It's a tough thing to have to live with. Anyways, I had a tons of emotions about it just as, on a human level. Like you don't want to lose people. Yeah. Definitely don't want to lose a 13 year old person who hasn't become a human being yet, yeah. like fully. And then you get a guy like Kobe, who I think was 41 or 42, who yeah. had been a full human as a basketball player, but was yeah. just starting to tap into yeah, that 41. other side of him. 41 is nothing, man. I mean, come on. If you're talking about basketball about players, it. that's considered old. But in human years, that's super oh, young, man. Like, as human beings, like, he's like he's fine. A dude could still out sprint me. You know, he could do oh, a million yeah. smarter than me, more competitive. He's a lot of better things, you know what I mean? And so it, it, that's just the point is that, like, he people that die at 50 or sometimes even 60 is too soon. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? So it's oh, like yeah. when I saw that, like, it, it, I had a, tons of feelings about it. Um, and to this day, like, I get sad watching some of the people talk about him. As if I knew him, I didn't. But yeah. I do know the yeah. influence. And I, I, first of all, if anyone's listening to this podcast and you're a Kobe fan and you found yourself being sad, I think that's perfectly normal. And yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone should yeah. feel weird. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it, it all depends on who you are and and what kind of um, background and what kind of uh, 
what what you were brought up with i mean uh, unfortunately for myself i i would really i've never been a fan of basketball not because i don't like the sport not because i don't like so the you player. have a cool perspective I, because I you didn't you it. know everyone knows who kobe is but you're a basketball fan yeah what, what did you feel like whenever you heard about well, it? i mean to me kobe was more of an influential figure as far as like a celebrity right his celebrity and and what he did to me was not or, or I mean, in my world, it wasn't basketball related. It was more like, oh, he's a cool dude, man. He's yeah. he's done all these things, and he made that movie about like, like the animation. And it was really cool, and I, I haven't watched it, but I watched I think it was like called the, Dear Basketball. Yeah, I what watched I the clips, and I'm like, oh my god, that's really cool. Like that to me was impactful, right, in my own life because of my background and because of what I grew up doing. Um, because I know the technicality or the, the techniques of, of creating something like that. So that 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 is how it affected me. I, I thought that that it was very impactful uh, and I seen it be impactful to a lot of people. And it didn't impact me as much. The Michael Jackson thing did as well to me. Really? Because I grew up with Michael Jackson. And I love his music. The same thing. Michael Jackson was a weird character and he he was very disliked as a person, I guess. But his music is universal, man. Nowadays, even if anybody would have said Michael Jackson is guilty of all these things, you can erase that if you listen to his music. I mean, he's gone anyway, right? And you can, you're never going to interact with him anyway. So you can detach the person itself from the, the music. Mm -hmm. The music is, truly is good. I feel the same way about Kanye West. Kanye West is very interesting to me because as a person i don't necessarily dislike him but i don't like him very much i don't like him at all he's interesting he's weird i like his music so i guess you're right we should we should well i like some of his music this is how weird it is very very rare and and i you know what i hate is kanye fans will defend him to the death yeah he'll straight up embarrass his fans he'll do things he'll literally say I don't give a fuck about my fans. He said things like this. People are like, dude, he's just genius. That's what geniuses yeah. say. And I'm like, dude, whatever, dude. That guy's yeah. so outlandish, man. Yeah, he's full of himself. Well, you have to respect a guy that, that first of all, has marketed himself very well. Very and well. And has become way famous before he ever even got with Kim. So no one can blame it on that. He was famous for producing before he ever did music. Yeah. And I can show you tons of old ciphers where he actually was killing well, he's it. He's good, yeah. He is lyrical. He's a good voice, good delivery. He just got so... He's... Weird, undoubtedly man. talented he, he definitely has a talent before and we before we veer too far from the the polarizing figure conversation because i think we kind of touched on like a how polarizing someone could be and we talked about both michael jackson and kobe how when someone's influential when they die yeah. it matters right so the one of the other things that we'll talk about and i know i had you watch the video of it um yeah. so i'll kind of set the scene for everyone because i think it'll develop into a bigger conversation that i think we should have um Ari Shafir, the comedian, yeah. uh, friends with Joe Rogan, friends with Theo Vaughn, friends with uh, yeah. Burt Chrysler, Tom Segura, Tom Segura all these guys. Um, very funny guy. I've seen some of his old stuff. I've seen a lot of his stuff through Joe Rogan, of course. Um, he hosts uh, a thing on, on Comedy Central where they talk about events. It's like stand-up comedy, but it's based off like true stories. Uh, really funny guy. I love his stand-up. Um, he's always been controversial. He's always been in trouble for some stuff. But he posted... A Twitter post that got removed, and then he doubled down by reposting a video yeah. on Instagram, I believe. And essentially what he was saying, and we'll just say what he said, and then we'll talk about it. But he was saying, a great thing happened today. Kobe Bryant has died. Yeah. He, he should have died. And 14 I forgot the, years ago. 14 years ago when he raped that woman in Denver yeah. or in Colorado, wherever it happened. And he went off. He said, sometimes bad things happen, but not today. Today, a yeah. great thing happened. Yeah. And he posted that. He said some other things. He was in North Carolina. He had a mural behind him of a bunch of basketball players. North Carolina is where Kobe oh, Bryant yeah. um, was from. Yeah, and um, that's and where he started playing, right? No, yeah. He was got drafted Hornets? by Vancouver, I believe. I, I should not be the one talking about this. And they got traded draft day to the Lakers. He's always been okay. a Laker. Uh, but I think he, uh, he had some history there. Either way... Um, I don't know if, if Shafir is from there. Or what, I don't know why he was. He was obviously already there to sure. record the video. Um, but he posted that I think the day of or the day after Kobe Bryant passed yeah. away, and the internet exploded. People were so mad at him. Yeah. I when I saw the video, you know that weird feeling in the stomach. Like I got yeah. that where I'm like, God, man, like it's too this soon. Guy, yeah. 
So let's let's talk about let's break down what your thoughts are and why you said that, and then we'll talk about both sides. Before you do that, here's what I want to say. My first thought is that stuff doesn't matter, right? Whatever your stupid little opinion is, like you should keep that to yourself because there's more important things. Okay. Doesn't matter if you know facts. People were hurting. There was more than just Kobe Bryant on that plane. There's more than just the, I mean, you have to respect yes. people, yeah. right? So my first thought was sick. Now, other people that have broken it down have made these points. These are not my points. I want to make that clear. I don't think this is the right thing. But they made the point. I think one of the things he said was the NBA, like, or the, people in, in, the, in the judicial system like basketball more than they like saving rape victims. It was like one of the comments he had made. Something similar to that. That wasn't verbatim. Um, and so, like, we have to decipher really what he's saying, right? He's saying that th this person, who, by the way, was not convicted, all, it was dropped. There, yeah. there was a civil case that they actually settled outside of court in which yeah. um, the woman, this is the main reason why everyone thinks that he for sure did it. The agreement was that the woman, she didn't even want money. So the settlement had nothing to do with money. She said, I don't want money. I just want you to write a letter confessing what you did and we're good. And Kobe did. Um, and so that was the huge issue back in the day. So the biggest thing is not what he did. We all know what he did. We all know what he's accused of. We all know what happened. And then, and then where he was today. And what I think that Ari Shafir is missing is you're forgetting to judge the person from today. Yeah. It, it, he didn't die back then. He didn't die. He, he passed away with his daughter recently. And we have to judge him, the human being of who he is today. And it turns out that like, he he's a decent human being from all that I can tell. He definitely was a great basketball player. So I don't even want to touch on that stuff, but he was doing so much. He created a school that his, yeah. he's created an academy that his daughter went to. He's doing yeah. so many good things. He had an Oscar for stuff. He turns out he want to be a storyteller, like all these things from everything that I can see, he changed. And I think it's super crazy for people. And we as hum human beings have to get better at this. Yeah. We seen we talked about labels earlier. This is why this is so important. We see someone, we call him something, and then we book him with the rest of the stuff. Yeah. What do you do? Is there not a path to redemption? Whether he did that or not, who did he become? Do we just shun everyone when you make one mistake, whether yeah. it's a big one like that or a small one like speeding? Or do yeah. we just throw everyone aside? Or are we going to go, hey, there's people, murderers. There's murderers in prison where the family of the murdered victim visits the murderer yeah, in jail yeah. and has forgiven them and is helping them recover. If that person can be that strong, then you at home or wherever you're at, like you can be it's... strong enough to look at someone and go, what is your redemption? And yeah. give them the opportunity. Not only did this person have the opportunity that people didn't give him, by the way, yeah. he took it anyways. The dude was still dropping points, still doing all this good stuff and being, became this great person and a really good father. That's yeah. who Ari Shafir should be judging, not your stupid opinion about something from back then. And there's a right time to make comments like that. And the day or even the day after is definitely not the right time. I think yeah. he's outlandish for saying those things. It's crazy stupid. And I think anyone in life that's thinking about judging someone on who they were is ridiculous. You need to look at who the person is today, yeah. right now, and judge them off what you see and give them credit for who they became. It, it To me, it's I really dislike... Um, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I know uh, Ari Shafir's uh, body of work very much. I mean, I, I know he's, he's a funny he's guy. Really, he's pretty hilarious, funny. and I've seen some really of his talented. clips. But he doesn't have, uh, or I, I haven't watched myself a lot of his work. Uh, but I would like to say this though: I think he's wrong in judging Kobe as a person himself, because I think the only person that can judge him and thus give him forgiveness is the person that that was in the case, right? The woman that he raped, right? That is the only person that should be given that that um, that feedback. I don't she, know if I agree with that because I think we're allowed to not like someone that yeah, did a bad thing. We're, we're allowed to not like them, but he is, I don't think he's allowed to, to bring such negativity into something that he was not in, a part of. Maybe the woman is already healed from it. Maybe the the woman yeah, has already forgiven. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Is it's it. been this didn't it's just so happen. This has been is, time. And not not only is he judging uh, Kobe Bryant, but he's also judging the people who are part of a ju judicial system, right? They whether they like basketball or not, better than they like uh, rape victims. That's that's not for him to to uh, say because who knows. Is that really what happened? Is it not really what I'm... You're really just adding, like, a fuel to that fire that is unnecessary. Here's the other part of it, is there's been announcers 
And I like that they do this. And Rachel Nichols is one of them. She's the host of The Jump on ESPN, which is a completely, uh, the whole segment is based off basketball. They don't cover yeah. any other sports. Yeah. And she was one of the first people that I noticed, uh, correct me if she's not, if anyone's listening that she's not, she she didn't avoid it. I think a lot of people were avoiding it. And they're like, he's a great man. He's just, she came out and said like, hey, he had a thing in, in back in the day in, in Denver and he was accused of rape. And she acknowledged that that had happened. But she also pointed out like, to see where he ended up, to see he grew as a human being. And he, he, he uh, looked at himself and said, how am I treating women? Even if he didn't, if that wasn't what he did with her, he for sure looked at himself and said, like, what is my relationship like with women? And why would I treat this person that way? And he changed. And he changed in such a way that he influenced his daughter doing that. And so I think it's important. The point I'm trying to make is I don't think it's bad that you acknowledge that those things happen because they did happen. Of course not. But can we not just look at anyone ever and go like, God, this person did this thing, but who are they now? Like, can we not incorporate both or do we, are we just who we are? Like, what, what is that? If you mess up once and you're done, like, I don't want to live in a world where people make a mistake and they're done. I like to live in a world where apologies are accepted and it's an opportunity. Yeah. And if that person forgave them and his wife forgave him, which she obviously did, took him back and has been with him since he was 18 years old, yeah. she must have seen something as someone really close to him that we don't see. And we have to respect that she is smart, intuitive, and saw something, knowing that she has kids with this person, yeah. and said, you know what, Like I want to see him, and then stuck it through. I want to see him grow, stuck it through, and he grew, and they had this relationship. We and have to value that. We have to see human beings as human yeah. beings, and we have to give them a path to redemption and honor and appreciate when they do. In worst case scenario, if you can't do that, then just shut up. Just yeah, shut up. Yeah, of course. You don't have to praise them or give them credit, but it's, don't devalue the, the progress someone's made, man. It's not, for, it's not for you to judge that. I mean, like you said, uh, she took him back, his wife took him back. She she decided that he was a good person that she was going to stay with, right? Now that's up to her, up to her to decide. Now, I wanted to make a point about other living uh, legends, if you will, currently that I have been uh, kind of redeemed. Um I like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is a great, I think he's a great person and I think he has grown a lot. And People if love you, that guy, if you, man. I love Mike Tyson. I, yeah. And Mike Tyson is, is, has become kind of like this wise man because of the things that he has experienced. He, he has went through a lot of uh, uh, hardship, a lot of grievance in his life because of the things that, that, that he was before, right? Think about Mike Tyson back in the, when he was 20 years old. Mike Tyson used to be a loose cannon. Mike Tyson used to be uh, he got accused of rape as well. And, I'm pretty sure he still is a loose cannon. <laughs> yeah, well, he's not though. He's not. If you he's listen a to his, to, uh, uh, well, I mean, we're Some all screws bit, loose for but, sure. But Mike Tyson is is not who he used to be. He's not gonna freaking uh, that dude's blow three hundred. Sure. Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, gonna yeah. Throw, blow three hundred. He's way calmer. Enough. I saw him on the, the the Joe Rogan podcast, and I've seen him on other stuff. Since yeah, he then. does. He's like a weed the, enthusiast. I, I think the, the weed's helping him. Podcast or yeah, the weed's yeah. helping him. He has his own yeah. weed company now. Yeah, yeah. He ships weed and to he, people's and houses. He raises pigeons and all this other. Oh, stuff. he's always it's, done that. Awesome. I love my pigeons. They're my but friends. To, to the point is that Mike Tyson is a living uh, person that has been flawed, and I have learned. In my own opinion, because again, we're going back to that whole thing about judging people just because of what we see and what we hear about them. Um, in my opinion, my son is a good dude, right? And all the stuff that he has done in his life and all the things that he has like gotten away with, if you will, yeah. right? I mean, whatever, man. We all have things that we have done wrong, and we all have things that wish we didn't that we wish we didn't do in the past and we all have things that 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 uh maybe we feel guilty of right i'm pretty sure that's the, that's the way he feels and you've been able to grow from them you've been able to to yeah uh, and redeem that yourself matter. and that matters a lot yeah yeah and there's tons of other celebrities right and we can get into all the things the, the multiple things that we both agree on here is that there should always be a path to yeah. redemption people do it while they're alive and when someone passes away you're supposed to remember their whole body of work which is their entire life and because he was this polarizing figure, we had this major insight to his life that a normal person wouldn't have. You can meet a dude on the streets today, you don't even know he's done some messed up stuff because he's not on TV all day. It's not in the news. Yeah, right? of course. And so it's like we need to understand that like the most vul – and I'm learning this from doing the podcast, man. The most vulnerable thing you can do is put your business out there for everyone to judge. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's yeah. people that watch this stuff and like they're super supportive, and there's people that aren't. And like that's cool. Like that, it, but people, anyone that ever looked at me and said, like, 
you're this, you're that. Like, I, I just have to smile with joy and just be like, dude, yeah. I, I appreciate the opinion, but everyone has one. Yeah. And I understand. I hope that people see it and go like, man, that's brave. Like you right now coming on here, anything you said tonight can be used against you one day. Oh, yeah. yeah they they yeah. might look back one day and be like, oh, so I said this, that day. Own, and it doesn't it. matter. I think you need to appreciate the fact that people are in that place. And so that's where we'll leave that story is I think that that guy's wrong. I do think he's a comedian, by the way. And I do want to point out that comedians joke about everything. Yeah. And so and like we, that, I do think that comedians get way too much heat. It's yeah. an art form. You wouldn't get mad at a poet. That was talking about some yeah. deep stuff. So why would you get mad at a comedian? But I do think there's a time and a place, and I do think he was wrong. Yeah. Um, but the, a whole another subject would be how hard we are on, on comedians. Um, yeah. Here's but to, I appreciate you talking to me about here's that. Here's to Jeff Ross because he's one of my favorite comedians. Oh, that guy's that a guy's... roaster, man. I love stand-up comedy, man. <laughs> I, I cannot Ross, get man. enough of it. Good. That was my original passion, man. Like yeah. before I did the podcast, dude, I always wanted to do stand-up. Yeah. Uh, but I realized that like it, you can't just do it. Everyone thinks they're funny. And everyone thinks their friends are funny. You ever meet someone? And I'm I'm this guy, by the way. So when I say this, no one get upset. Um, all my friends think I'm funny. They all say I should do stand up. Like everyone says yeah. that. I'm that guy. I've said that before, dude. Being a realistic person, like it takes a lot of hard work. Oh, really yeah. funny people suck at comedy sometimes because sometimes you're different. You don't own your craft, then you can't really be good at it. And so I, I that was my original thing was to be a comedian. Uh, but I never had the opportunity. I never like literally. I'd like to think I had to drive, but if I did, then I'd be on stage right now doing something. Yeah. But instead, oh, yeah. I chose this because I found that I really like this a little bit more. I like being funny, but I also like having real conversations, and I can't yeah. do both as a comedian. Um, so I enjoy this a little bit more. And this is really good. I, I really like that you're doing this because I feel like it elevates everyone as a person to be able to talk it out because not. It's very rare that anybody gets to sit down with anybody else, really, and talk for hours and hours about different subjects. Like, you don't... What's the last time you talked to anybody uh, like this last outside of the podcast? On, uh, outside of the four? podcast. <laughs> no, I'm just no, kidding. No, outside of the podcast. All like, the on time. the street. I get what you're saying, but me, personally, all the time. This is what well, I... You go this deep. You start talking about... Yes, uh, it, it is. I mean, uh, not the... Uh, I, I get in trouble for how deep I get into conversations because I forget to... I, I get so sucked in on something. Okay. So, but I get what you're saying. Usually you don't. Me, I do, which is why I'm doing the podcast because I need this fixed. Yeah, and you know what? That that's that's actually a great, excellent point that you bring up. That that you do do it. It makes me realize that I don't, and I need to. Because how do you I feel, feel talking to me right now? I feel good. Yeah. And I feel I feel like I'm um, uh, figuring out some stuff about you that I didn't know, and I'm figuring out some stuff yeah. that I already knew, but that we were going. That, but this is probably the deepest we've ever talked, and most people don't talk about stuff this deep unless they're like super good friends and the isn't that the benefit of doing stuff. a one-on-one -on -one conversation yeah. i don't think me and you've ever been in a situation where it's just me and yeah you, exactly right and that's and what so happens like, i think that's important but i think it's important that people understand these things here's my goal i say some shocking shit on this podcast and people go what he said that but somewhere even if it's just one person that's like dude i feel the same way like oh, yeah, I, yeah. I want people to know and i want to be vulnerable and that's part of the part that like is super brave man like it's like you have to just like put your thoughts out there and then just yeah. be willing to get them judged, man. It's just the way it goes. That's... But I enjoy it. And I I don't want to ever become the guy that goes, I don't give a fuck what people have to say about me. Yeah, and I might say that. True. And I've done it. But I care, bro. I yeah. care. I think everybody does. That's I care never a lot. true, man. But dude. I do care that more people enjoy it than don't. Yeah. I don't mind if people don't enjoy it. But I, I do care that more people enjoy it, right? Yeah. Because that's just the way it goes. And I like having conversations. And I want, dude, so many people have hit me up since this came out. And they're like, dude, I want to be in your next episode, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I've told no to anyone, dude. Like, I, I, yes. Like, how many of them will follow up? I don't know. I have guests already lined up. Yeah. Some of them that are, that are persistent will probably get on, man. But the whole point is, like, I want to have real conversations with real people. Whether they're really close friends, not so close friends. Um, I don't care, man, because I, I enjoy this stuff, man. I really want yeah, people uh, get the inside of, of what it's like. They get an inside of me. They get an inside of you. They get inside yeah. of a nurse. They get they they uh, uh they get the inside of, of whatever the fuck I am. Like You know what I mean? Like, whatever they get out of it, like, the people that listen, the feedback has been awesome, man. And, like, I think people are, are just, like, really, really uh just they're open. really seeing the point of it. And so I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, like I said, I mean, it elevates you as a person. It elevates everybody as people when they come on this uh, this podcast and this this um, type of conversation in general for people. It, elevate, it elevates you because it also lets you understand some of the thoughts that you hadn't unscrambled in your head. 
Right. Yeah, I think saying them out loud helps. And, and um, because I want to like, I'm kind of like, I want to figure out the proper way to say this. I have like a, like a, a me, like a, I sound like I know what I'm saying at all times. Like yeah. if I say something, I say like, bro, I'm not doing it. That's the end of it. It's the way it is. Done. Like that's not literally what I'm saying all the time, but that attitude of like, this is the way it is. Yeah. I'm not arrogant. That comes off as arrogant sometimes. Like Will thinks he knows. I don't fucking know. I can't help the way I am, man. Yeah. I talk about how I how I talk, man. And I have a habit of doing that. And I think sometimes it's it can be intimidating, but here it doesn't feel that way. There's been several times where I told you, hey, I don't know if I feel that way. Or I don't know if oh, I yeah, yeah. and you've done the same. And it's like I, I want that, man. I don't I'm not offended. Like I, I like if someone doesn't agree Everybody's with me, like different. I want to hear about it. Uh, but I like it's that's just the way I am. I'm always going to be that way. I don't want anyone to ever interpret it as arrogance, man. It's just the way I feel. So I feel. let me ask you a question. Ask since that's a good segue to this. What is one opinion that you have that is unpopular and that that you think that people won't like if you say it out loud? Ooh, tons of them, man. We did a, a podcast. I have a few of them that I don't know about yet. But if I had to guess, I have one. I have a, so I did a podcast with my boy Yemi, and we talked about racism a bit. And we both uh, said some things that were pretty controversial. I don't know if you saw that episode. I haven't seen it yet, no. I love it, right? Yeah. I understand how it's it makes hard. people a little feel. feel. Dude, that conversation in general is uncomfortable, right? But you're yeah. sitting here talking to me, who's probably the whitest person in the world, and then Yemi, who's mixed. He's, his, he's, he has a black parent and a white parent. And okay. I think he mentioned, I hope I'm not misquoting him, his dad's from Africa, and his mom is from Whitesville, <laughs> Wisconsin, I think he said. No, okay. but she's a white lady. Yeah, you know, wherever white people are from. I don't know. Because white people are just white, <laughs> They're right? From everywhere, man. But he like his skin tone, if you if you didn't know that, it's a black guy and a white guy, right? Yeah. And so you'd assume this, like you can kind of guess when people talk about racism where it's gonna go. Um and we, we had like really opposite opinions. I ended up saying like, Hey, I think um I think everyone's a little bit racist and I think what you do with that information is what matters. If if I were to pick my own racism, right? Because I can't just say everyone's racist and not talk about myself. Yeah, of course. I was like, if I had to pick my own racism, I think I might be a little racist against white people. And I don't know how people took it. I do know <laughs> it's the only video that doesn't have 100% likes. I'll say that. Like, <laughs> some, someone, at least one person, if not more, didn't yeah, like the video. Yeah. Um, and then at one point, Yemi says, uh, I feel the same way about black people. And then like he talks about That's how... How he doesn't connect with, with black people is the same way that I'm saying that I don't connect to white people. And we broke it down pretty well. Yeah. But no matter what, like those conversations have shock value where people go, wait, first of all, people will go, wait, what? Like, is the white guy saying he doesn't like white people and the black guy saying he doesn't like black people? Yeah. And then they're breaking down what we're talking about and they're even more confused. And then like, it, it's, I want there to be shock value. I want people to question what they're yeah. watching and I want people to be upset and I want people to be happy. I want people to be sad. I want people to be That's angry. I want people to way. question themselves and go, well, wait, if they feel that way, what do I feel? Like, and I want people, I want to have the conversation is all I'm saying. That's, that's, that's how you win. That's how, that's how you win. Look, I, I was just thinking about this. I was going to mention that earlier. Um, so think about what the persona that people create that are the most successful. They are specifically in sports, right? Think about Floyd Mayweather. Now, Floyd Mayweather was a master at that. So he always uh, kind of fan the fires to make people dislike him because w anytime they wanted to go watch it, I don't know if you if you love Floyd Mayweather, but most don't. people that I know wanted Respect to him. see him lose. I think lose. he's a good boxer. Yeah, you. That's why you watch him. You that's watch him because you want to see him get exactly. Knocked now that's Conor McGregor. I know you love Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor is the same. Why do you though, think I love Conor McGregor? Because you've told because me. Because I do. <laughs> because you fucking Irish. told me. <laughs> and I'm Irish. No, but th he's doing the same thing. He's he's playing the game because he has that leverage. But I think more people like Conor McGregor because he actually finishes fighters, which Mayweather didn't do. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Like like in in relevance to like the shock values that what you're he saying? shit talks. That's that's the part that I'm talking about. He he does a lot of shit talking to build these things up, and you know, unfortunately, it's what's a, the metaphor? Because I don't think we're shit talking. I think we're just talking about well, think about the Khabib people, fight, right? I mean, he was shit talking, like straight up. Well, a lot of people hate him for that fight, 
If anything, he gained a lot of fans back after this last fight because he was way more humble. Yeah, but he for sure exactly. lost fans. But to, Probably to, the to, most to, fans because he talked all that shit and then it was the first time he didn't back it up. That's what I'm saying is that he – that is the highest selling pay-per-view uh, ever for the UFC. Is it number one? Uh, yes, yeah, number one. And the reason for that, it's because he talked that much shit and he built it up. This last pay-per-view, of course, it wasn't going to be as big because it's Cowboy Cerrone. I mean, I love Cowboy. He's he's a badass. and They're it, saying he does everything big. that is but they were saying joe rogan was talking about it today on his podcast yeah that it was surprisingly bigger they think it might be very close to the could fight that's what she said um so <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who's taking on this weird conversation man what we're I talking mean, about controversial don't, topics don't, don't be stressed out about that now we're in mma just, fighting just, somehow you were the one talking earlier about fucking anyway about that's, murder that's going. i really like the fact that that people play that card because that's how you win. It really is how you win. I think it's okay if it's who you are. And I think, like, I, I guess, like, the reason why I don't like your analogy is because I don't think that that was the point of the conversation. I think the point of the conversation was to talk about how he felt. When I said my comments, I didn't know how he felt. We didn't pre-discuss that. Like, yeah. I simply stated how I felt about it. Yeah. And the irony in of in it of it is i thought he might tell me he might school me which i wanted him to do i would yeah. not that i wanted him to school me but it if he was saying hey let me enlighten you on some stuff i'm a listener and i'm a grower yeah, and I, w- I would want to hear that information and try to evolve as a human being he didn't do that he was like honestly i feel the same way and i was like i, I remember in the podcast i think i was like what and he goes yeah. yeah i feel the same way about black people and i was i was blown away and so it's like but I don't think people want to hear that, man. They don't want to hear like two people like encouraging that it's okay to like not feel that way. And I'm not encouraging that it is. I'm just being honest with how I feel. I tend to gravitate more towards Hispanic and black people than I than I tend to gravitate towards white that, people, but that's, including that was my, point. my family. So that was my point, though. That it wasn't that that uh, McGregor or Floyd are like this or that. My point was that shock value is what wins. That's how you win the game. Yeah, that's no. how they win. Well, there's the a game. benefit in that. There's a benefit in saying shocking things. There really yeah. is. Uh, that's how you sell a fight. I mean, that really is how you sell a fight. Yeah. If you really want to be a huge star, you want to sell a fight. That is or the last you have thing. To back it up, like like Tony, because Tony doesn't sell fights. He sells, like he doesn't hype up fights. He sells he sells fights with violence, and that's beautiful, man. Tony Ferguson is my favorite fighter, by the way. You you already know. He's that, coming man. up too. I love Get Tony. I, I was gonna say if. Because I love both Khabib and Tony because they're both amazing fighters. Khabib in his own way, Tony in his own way. But if Khabib were to lose, I wouldn't want it to be to anybody else but Tony, man. Because Tony deserves that shit. First of all, Tony's I don't think anyone's going to beat Khabib. You don't but, think so? I, yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think he's gonna, uh, Tony's going to win. The person but, who I think is the best chance is probably Tony. Yeah, that's um, that's my opinion. I, mean, I don't see it Tony. ever happening. But if someone told me, hey, it for sure happened to someone in the future, I go, this Fucking Tony wasn't. I, I, I could see could be losing if he moved up to 170. I There's a all, lot of killers in 170. I think we all want to see could be lose so we forget how good he is. It's the same thing that I John Jones is going lose. through right now. Where like I think he's so good that they hype up the they overly hype up the other guy so much yeah. that I always find myself even in the DC fights because he's so good. I go wait DC can win. Ever, dude. There's no, he's never going to beat him. And then now with Dominic Reyes, because he's undefeated, and I watch his highlights, yeah. and everyone's like, John Jones struggles with tall, lanky fighters, and this guy's a knockout artist. And I'm like, when I, it, for a brief moment, I go, damn, Reyes could be the guy. And then I go, wait, I think Santos is a better fighter than Reyes. Oh, Santos is a killer, and man. Santos didn't, to, in my opinion, didn't win a round. He did shatter his knee and fight through a lot. Shattered it's, it's, multiple ligaments. Santos had some Was great... a beast. But he, in my opinion, didn't win a round. And no. so it's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting tricked. I'm getting tricked right now. And so, so I think I... getting back to Khabib, I think that's the thing with Khabib is people want him to lose so much that we start. When I think of Tony, I think of it as one of the biggest win streaks. Everyone he fights is bloodied up. But then I, I realize like nobody is Khabib. And I go, oh, that's right. What's the point in all these weapons if you're getting freaking bear hugged and you can't do any of them? And so I, I in that sense, I tend to lean towards Khabib, but I, I do get tricked by the promos, and I probably will get tricked by that. That promo's not even out yet. When it comes out, I'm going to get tricked because I, I love Tony Ferguson. I can't remember the last time Khabib fought somebody who's as good at wrestling as him. Nobody is, really. But I can't remember the last time Khabib fought somebody who was uh, an excellent wrestler. Well, right? Think about it. He here's the thing. Barbosa. is his only round he's ever lost was to Connor. People yeah, forget that. Connor that. did win around. Let's 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 I mean, this is not just the opinion. I mean, 
you know Khabib took that round off, right? Because he was boxing Connor. And I'm not going to dispute on. that. Because and the, the reason he did that, I think, is because of the success he so had what's, in the second what's round. So what's the uh, what's the um, formula? If you who who beats Khabib? Do you think who he, beats uh, Khabib? Because it, um, here's here's what happens, right? You in our brains we go, who's a good wrestler? Because Khabib, first of all, Khabib isn't a good wrestler, and he, he's a he's sambo, right? Yeah, so, sambo. Yes, so, which yes, I get that it's wrestling, but he doesn't have good submissions. He has decent submissions. Ferguson has way better jujitsu than than yeah. Uh, you than know uh, Khabib. So it's like, do we really want a wrestler? Because when we have two elite wrestlers, they tend to box. And we saw no. that in Damian Maya and Ben Askren. Let's yeah. not forget, though. Let's not forget. Because this is this is one of the, the formulas to be Khabib. The formula to be Khabib is to submit him. You have to submit him. So that's the see, only formula. No, yeah, think about it. Let, let me, dude, have you seen his neck, dude? How dude, do you even? Have you, did you it's see It's going to have to be like a toe. Like if someone can get a toe hold and just like rip his toe off, maybe. Did you, did you ever see a Poirier, though? Did you see the Poirier versus Khabib fight? Yes. Poirier was this close to submitting Khabib. Let's yeah. not, I mean, when I say this close, I mean this close, right? It, it wasn't that close. Like for 15 but, seconds twice, he had an option that to, was, to maybe that submit was him. Surprising. But he, again, didn't lose a round in that fight either. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. No, so that's ridiculous, right? But for a moment, you could have thought, this is the this is the trick. You got to take his back and But is Poirier uh, no for his submissions? It's like no, no. This but, is my point. But like, he has good ground game. I, mean, I get what you're what saying. Means. So if someone that's not known for submissions almost submits someone, what about someone who is known for submissions? Tony, but there's just so much hey, more Tony that goes might into do it. some weird shit. Look at um, Zabit. Zabit is the same kind of. Maybe like, he's the guy. No, here's no, the thing. So fight. I, I get what you're saying because if I were to give someone credit, it would be Ferguson because Ferguson's one of those guys that doesn't mind wrestling. He's weird in the way that like, you know how like the winner of the fight is usually the person that dictates where the fight is, right? Yeah. That person usually wins. Yeah. But with Ferguson, he's not always the dictator, but he doesn't care. Like, yeah. he doesn't mind being on his back. He doesn't mind being on top. He, he doesn't does. mind standing up. He doesn't mind And he clinch. doesn't give up, man. He's, that his guy, cardio's never ending. That he has guy huge will, heart. That, that guy will... And that, this is one of, the th one of the only people that I think would actually do that. That guy would actually die in the ring, man. He won't give up. I, I don't think there's very many people who do that, right? There is there is very few people who would take the amount of damage that I don't that Tony I does. That. But no, I, I don't want to see that either. No, he's my favorite fighter, man. Because I want to see that. Like but if it's if yeah, it's someone like Khabib it. is grounded pounding you, they're gonna call it TKO. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's or what or maybe he'll said. submit you like he submitted Connor. Yeah. Um, after he's grounded pounding you, so I don't I don't think that will ever happen. Uh, but I I I am excited for that fight. I can't oh, help but root for wait. Tony. But yeah, if I was a too. betting man, I'd put it on Khabib. Yeah. If I'm a betting man, I'm going to put it on John Jones as much as they hype oh, up yeah, Dominic Reyes. Yeah. Uh, who else is in that car? Do you remember? Um, um, Valentina um, Shevchenko. Shevchenko. I, I would, never, I would be... never bet against her, man. Unless, Unless she was fighting, fighting Nunez. Nunez. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, I mean, that's that's Nunez, though. Nunez is a wrecking machine, man. Like, yeah. look at all the stuff that she has been able to accomplish in such a short time. you think time. she could beat Clarissa Shields in a boxing match? Definitely. No, no. Yeah. no. In a boxing match? No. Nunez is Here's the hands, thing, dude. No. Have dude, you seen her back? Her I don't back care is... what anyone says. That's not how things work. Do you think Look, Cyborg... how good how good of a boxer is Connor? Isn't you... that what he's known for? Do you think Could he win a fight against Mayweather? Do you think Cyborg could beat Clarissa Shield? Cyborg is the champ currently no, in, in I don't Bellator. think Cyborg beats you don't Clarissa think so? Shield. In a boxing match, Clarissa Shields beats both of them. Here's the thing: is Clarissa Shields is not problem. trying to box her. She's actually training MMA. She was on. Did you see that? She had an interview a couple days ago where she said, "Hey, I'm training MMA. I'm gonna take my. She already has a plan. She's gonna take my first MMA fight in a year. It won't be against Nunez. I'm gonna have three or four fights, and then I'll fight her. I'll fight her That's eventually. Stupid. That's no, stupid. but I respect it because here's the thing: the boxer's gonna win every time. They're talking about uh, Masvidal versus Canelo. The, Canelo's gonna win. I don't yeah, care. You that. do a guy. You go and fight a guy that only does one aspect of your sport. That's all he focuses on. But that's he's not... gonna win, man. But here, the other way around. When has it ever happened? Can you think of a boxer that went to MMA and was successful? James Tony got beat up by by um, um, Randy Couture, right? He but was one the, of the most famous boxers. All the fighters in in MMA are boxers. They are boxers. They're not. Uh, as no, no, sharp no, no, as no, no, regular no. boxers. Who who's a, who was a boxer that moved Carter. over to MMA? Well, no, no, he, he, Carter he actually a boxer was a boxer. First. Yeah, he was a boxer first, actually, Who, not professional. I'm a professional boxer. There's one person I know of. That's why I'm asking. It's James Tony and, and no, 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 there's more there's than one that. person that I know of that was actually successful and was a champ. Can you name the one person 
that who was a won boxer. a world title in boxing and then also a Holly Holm. There you go. She's the, the only, only one. Person. Yes, and won it. But that never happens. Times. So Clarissa Shields wanting to do that is, I think, it's amazing. She's young enough that she could do it. She's like 24, 25, yeah. dude. She's already. I think she's an Olympic medalist. Like God, man, that girl is so talented. She could train for three years and still be getting into her prime oh, yeah. and taking her first fight. That I girl could be think... so good. She's already conquered boxing, man. I am so happy, and I'm glad she's doing it because she's one of the rare people that I think can can do the same thing Holly Holm did and become a UFC champ. I think she. Could. I think. I think. I don't think she'll be problem... Nunez, but I think she could. She. Um, you don't think she could be Nunez in, boxing, in an MMA though? match? I don't. I think Shields wins in in a boxing match. For but sure. how though? Because I, 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 I don't know. The problem I yeah. see. The problem. The only problem I see, and the reason I see Nunez losing, is because of the uh, the amount of stamina it takes to be in a boxing match. It's it's twelve rounds, three minutes, um, right? So that is a very very long time as opposed to having a five minute uh, round, uh, twenty five minute fight that is. A lot of times, like in boxing, for example, you you hold you you know you you hold the other person like and they, they, they and break, you. break you. Up. In MMA, that's allowed. You're you can hold them against the cage. So like, we, it burns up a lot of energy. But can we it's both not agree that an MMA fight is harder than a boxing fight? Can we both agree on that? It, uh, yeah, yeah. There, it's 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 harder uh, because of the. There's well, a reason the, the there's possibility, only three rounds in an The MMA possibility fight. of getting kicked, champ. I think, is one of the biggest things. Or elbowed, yeah. or more tight need. Dude, yeah, those things are out. huge. Dude, to take one aspect of fighting and to like compare it to one single UFC, which is like, don't eye gouge, don't kick him in the nuts, don't do a, a, a 12 to 6 elbow. Like, there's not a lot of rules, right? And uh, if you see it, people like, what what always surprises me about MMA in, in general and the toughness of the people is I've seen people like, uh, well, let's think about Diego Santos again. That guy was uh, had what two or three torn ligaments in his leg, and he and didn't he even like make a face five. like he was hurting. He was like, "That is ridiculous." Yeah, man. or these people beast, that man. that come out of a Those kimura Brazilians. when they're in a kimura, right? And your mm -hmm. arm is getting folded to an un unnatural position, and then you somehow get out of it and continue fighting and throwing fists. I mean, that's crazy, right? No boxer is ever gonna experience that. That's nuts. Yeah, but I think someone like Clarissa Shields who trains for a while can get really good at it. But I'm just saying that, 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 that it's a different world. It, it, and it means the same thing both ways. If we can agree that she wouldn't last in a UFC fight, at least not right away, let's at least admit if Nunez right now, maybe even giving her six months to train, which wouldn't happen, right? Yeah, they would probably give her three or four, maybe three. It's just that she wouldn't. Thing. She wouldn't beat her. She just wouldn't beat her. I'm sorry. I don't care who I'm says I'm pretty what. sure she could knock her out in the first few rounds. I don't Just think because, so. uh, well, don't here, care here's the it. fallacy, though. We're talking about McGregor, who knocked out the number one pound for pound fighter in Jose Aldo at the time in like Aldo a couple was seconds, bro. Pounds, man. I, I mean, don't care what people say. You're talking about a guy that could do that in MMA, but couldn't even really rock Mayweather. Come on. It's a different uh, world, man. Mayweather, Nunez Mayweather would is, not is be is able to step defensive. into her world and do those things. The thing she does in the UFC. She could not do. Did you see her last fight? She beat up Cyborg, who was probably the other person that I thought could maybe beat her, quicker than she beat up that last girl in her fight, uh, Jermaine Durand. I mean, she yeah. like started toying around with her, ended up taking it, I think, all the way to the third. I think it went to yeah, the decision, like right? That. Yeah, like yeah that. it's like you see her do that to Cyborg and then turn around and do that. What are you going to do against a killer that only boxes and you're only allowed to box to? Clarissa Shields wins that fight. I, I I see your point with that, and I again I think it's a stamina thing. Uh, clears her shields if she can drag the fight into the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round. Then and then uh, Nunez would completely fade at that point because she is a big, big, uh, like powerful fighter, right? She's yeah. she has power, so she usually gets it done very quickly. Like you said, uh, against the enemy, she didn't. So uh, maybe at that end of that fight, she just didn't have the same amount of power. But the the problem is that I believe that she has a lot more power than Clarissa Shields uh, from the start, right? Yeah. This this is what happened, I think, with uh, Conor McGregor and and uh, Cabo Cerrone is that I think Conor McGregor has a lot more power off the start, and he overwhelmed. Uh, uh, Cerrone, yeah. and that was it, right? So I think Amanda Nunes can do that to Clarissa Shields. I think she can go in there and just overwhelm her with her size and power, 
And then, I mean, but if like you I talked said, about the Conor McGregor fight, he didn't beat up Cowboy Cerrone with punches. He kicked him in the face. He shoulder the bumped him and broke the, his the nose. Explosive. These are things you can't do in a boxing fight. Yeah, but you can be explosive. You can all literally right. go in there. I could argue with you all day, man. I don't think Clarissa <laughs> Shields loses this. a boxing yeah, match, I against him. but I do think she would lose a fight. Okay, against who, who wins uh, between uh, Wilder and Fury? In the I'm gonna fight. go, dude. I cannot help but go for Fury. Yeah. Um, well, he won the first fight. I think I he think did. I think he won the first fight. Uh, although that knockout and stand up was a little iffy because I think it was, it was really 10 close seconds. to 10 seconds. Yes. Yeah. But if we, let's say it was 10 exactly and he made it, he wins that fight. Yeah. Because he yeah. for sure won the round. Yeah. I don't think Wilder gets any worse. I do think it's possible Fury does. So I'm scared for him. But as a fan watching it, I'm to- I'm a hundred percent going for Fury. Yeah, it's that whole thing about. But um, Wilder, Wilder's no joke, dude. That guy's a. He beast, can punch. Man. He can punch. Well, look at what happened to Ortiz. This happened. The same. The same thing happened in the first fight. Ortiz was winning that fight because Wilder doesn't really box much as much as he like. I think he knows he's gonna pops. land that punch at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And he just waits. And one day he and won't. He just wait. Yeah. Yeah. Look at. Did you watch Canelo versus Kovalev? Man, no, I don't that. watch any Canelo fights anymore. Why? Because you know I, he's gonna win. Yes, I think his <laughs> opportunity to lose Kovalev. is past. He was fighting Kovalev. Kovalev is. I also don't watch a... boxing that much. So if I don't know the other name, I don't watch boxing. Uh, Sergey Kovalev used to be a very, very fearsome uh, boxer uh, before he fought. Um, what did he fight? I don't remember who he fought, but he he ended up losing very badly, uh, and then. After that, he kind of went on a skit, so he just wasn't the same. Um, but when he fought Canelo, when you watch Canelo fighting him, Kovalev is a fucking giant. Yeah, and and Canelo was Did holding his own. Or, yeah, Canelo was was holding his own, and because it was at a higher was weight, throwing. right? I oh think yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, natural weight, natural weight class. When you think about like um, Khabib fighting, so what's like, Canelo literally. naturally, and what did he fight at on that fight? Uh, I think I, I don't remember. Or not naturally. Uh, what does he normally fight at? And then where was I think this he fight? fights like a one fifty five, one sixty. I know the boxing like weights are different. Or something, right? Yes. So okay. Kovalev was way bigger. Basically. So it would be like Khabib fighting Connor at one seventy or something. Or fighting a 170. No, because like, like Khabib and, and Connor are pretty comparable in size as far as like natural size. But it's it's like Usman, Khabib, Khabib Usman Woodley, fighting like Usman or fighting Khabib fighting Woodley, right? Oh, that guy's a yeah, that guy swollen is a, marshmallow. Solid. Yeah, it's, he's huge, right? And and they could both make 170, so you could say, oh, they could fight. But realistically, I mean, there's no way, man. It's impossible, right? So I wouldn't say impossible, but... Well, I mean, it's unrealistic to think that there's going to be that much dominance at that weight class. I mean, yeah, Usman is a huge guy, man. Yeah, he is. And we'll see where he goes next. All right, man. We've been talking for a long yeah, ass time. Let's do our confession I talked to you about, and then we're going to wrap this shit up. Okay. You good with that? Yeah, so what was that? What's up? What was the uh, confession? Well, bro, you're going to give me a moment to open this up? No, do it right now, Will. No, I, you think I, I got no more time, man. I got to go take a leak. Hey, no, Will, what are you doing uh, with your time? I just sit around and memorize confessions. <laughs> oh, cool. That sounds like something you would do. Uh-huh. <laughs> just uh, for you know, safety. I got a Rolodex of confessions in my head. All right. This one's kind of funny, man. Um, it's a little bit longer, but we'll go through it. All right. Here's the anonymous confession. They titled it A Pirate's Life. I don't fucking know why. Arr. I actually do know why, but I think that's a silly title. <laughs> All right. It says, I haven't been able to find a job. So I'm assuming it's a guy. <laughs> uh, hey, man, that's sexist. All right. I, I, I haven't been able to find a job. I'm so scared of disappointing my dad, for sure a guy, that I told him I found a part-time job in data entry when I've really been making money off of selling premium accounts on file sharing websites to download pirated pornography and writing erotica for an Amazon store. I make about $1,000 a month, but it's very dangerous and could be shut down any day now. I wake up at 7.30, shower, put on khakis and a nice shirt and shoes, and I go somewhere they won't find me, and I just write or browse or game all day and go home. What do I think about that? Damn. Wait, hold on. Let's let's uh summarize this real quick. So this person hasn't been able to find a job, doesn't know how to tell dad, found a part-time job selling pirated porn online, makes about $1,000 a day, um, wakes up in the morning, pretends to leave so his dad doesn't know that he doesn't have a job. Hey, man, I, you can't. 
First of all, the pirated porn thing online doesn't bother me. I appreciate someone who says, hey, I, I don't have a job, so I'm going to make money somehow. Um, I don't think that's weird. I think, all right, let's be serious for a second. Because I think, just in case this is someone that's younger than me, which it probably is, I don't know. I think, first of all, if you start doing stuff like that, you're like building a small lie. The small lie is like, I'm going to do this until I find a real job. Next thing you know, you're the dude that leaves his house every morning dressed up like he's pretending to go to work, and then it becomes a bigger lie. So I don't think you should lie to your parents. I think this person should definitely keep doing job interviews. Yeah. Damn, pirating porn, is that even legal? Well, is it legal I, to pirate anything? Legal. Just the word pirate no. sounds bad. Pirating is anything is, is, is illegal. Uh, who gets pirated porn anymore, man? You, you, you could just go online on any website and not have well, I think pirated. that's the No, no, no. I don't think you want pirated porn. If I had to guess, I, I'm gonna I get a I'm like, dude, I know what pirated porn is. <laughs> I'm gonna guess this guy's stripping videos of actual porn sites that's, that's and I'm then re-uploading like, them to his own site and then making money off them. He says oh, he makes a thousand dollars a day. Uh, yeah. If I had to guess, that's what he's doing. Which I personally respect the hustle. If you thought of that idea and you're getting away with it, because he said yeah, I, I could be that. shut down at any moment. Obviously, don't work illegal Bro. jobs. There's something respectable about a person that like is creative and hustles. I don't think people should be stealing stuff. I I, I don't approve of it. But yeah. If I'm trying to find the silver lining, and I appreciate the fact that he's trying, he's hustling. I don't think he should lie to his parents. I think he should. I think a thousand dollars like a month. He said that's not a lot uh, at all, man. No, that's not. That's five hundred dollars a paycheck, dude. Just go work at a call center. Two hundred fifty bucks a week. I, I respect the hustle as well. I mean, dude, you got to do what you got to do. And what I the reason I respect that hustle more than i would usually anybody else is because that person is smart man it takes some certain kind of technical knowledge to be able to do that so hey you know props to you like you're gonna be able to do big things if in the this future, person's pirating porn successfully i think he's wasting his skills i can find yeah, much better exactly skills. right i don't even know how to pirate like i don't even what does that even mean how do you strip a video off a site that doesn't let you strip their video oh wait wait no you just get a boat and then like you yeah, you just go look you for lose gold. A leg and Hopefully you... not curse gold so you don't turn into a zombie. Yeah. You watch way too many Disney movies, man. No, I'm not watching Disney movies. Well, it's the only people that make movies about pirates anymore. No, the Pirates of the Caribbean. You watch... Dude, there's porn oh, about wait, the Pirates right, of the there's Caribbean. Disney. Anyway. I saw it one time. Oh, yeah. I've I seen forgot it what it's called. And it's terrible because I don't like a I don't remember. Anymore. Have you ever watched a porn like where you're like, bravo. Y'all killed that performance. <laughs> nah, Never, I, man. Nah, I don't like supposed a backstory. to be bad movies, man. <laughs> but let's not get off. Let's time. not get off the subject, man. If you so, were all right, if, if you were giving person. this person advice, let's say, let's say it was someone younger than you. Let's say he's twenty-five and he's doing this, yeah. and he asked you, and he said, "Don't laugh," and you promised you wouldn't laugh. Let's say, and he gave you the story that I just read, and he said, "What do I do? What would you tell him?" I would say. Spice up your resume, man. Go talk to somebody who knows about resumes or, or have have somebody like give you their opinion on the resume and just make it good and then just go apply. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get a job. Yeah. I mean, and also, I guess the question becomes like, what kind of jobs are you looking for? Because I thought everybody could get a job at a call center or like those type of jobs are, are there, man, for the taking. When and I first started more reading the confession, my first thought was like, like how I told you, like, damn, it's impressive. I respect the hustle. And so I got to the part where you said I made a thousand dollars a day, yeah. and I was like, that's no, nothing, a month, man. right? Or uh, yeah, imagine like, a thousand dollars. Damn, yeah, that's balling. <laughs> like that. I respect no, that. A thousand dollars a month, it? which sounds like a lot when you say a thousand. That's five hundred dollars a paycheck. When's the last time? I don't even think a minimum wage job makes you five hundred dollars. Yeah, if you're it? working forty hours a week, probably. Yeah, I not, think it, man. or maybe close, right? Which yeah, doesn't so, still like well, for me. Well, minimum wage like nine bucks an hour or something like that. I don't even least. know, but I know that it's not worth it to make a thousand dollars a month doing a illegal job, probably. Yeah. And then you're lying yeah. to your parents and then dressing up to leave. I think that's pretty silly. I this think you dress was... up to leave and go put in applications. Maybe keep the job because you already have it, but then like God, put in some effort. I think this person uh, likes what he does, or he or she. Yeah. I think they actually like it. I think that what the reason they're saying that they're ashamed of it is to once again cover themselves from sounding like, oh, you know, they they don't have motivation. But in reality, I think they like what they do, and that's yeah. pretty. Plus, cool. they get to watch porn all day. I guess that's cool. You can. Here's the thing. Can, Here's the part that yeah, I don't understand: do. is they leave the house to pirate porn. Where yeah. are you going that you're pirating this porn? You can't be like at a Starbucks, right? They're gonna know if you're on their Wi-Fi. Like where is he going? So, well, I mean, he, he probably has a. Because he said public buddy places, man. I just picture him like at a Starbucks. Maybe as a partner or something like that, and somebody lets him go to their house. And would you let your buddy go to your house to pirate porn? 
What if, if I'm already you? doing it? If I'm getting a cut, maybe but he makes a not, thousand. Bucks. Trust me, a thousand. You're not getting cut. What if your buddy was like, "Hey, man, like I, I got, I got fired," and so my parents think that like, so I'm gonna Would dress up do it? and I'm gonna no. show up at your house at seven thirty in the morning, and I just want to pirate porn at your house. Would you let him do it? Oh, maybe he has a girlfriend or something that. Or maybe but you don't know. You don't know anything. Would you let him do it? No, I wouldn't let. And he's do like, it I can't cut you in because I don't make enough money. I wouldn't let it do it myself, but I know that some people would. I yeah, mean, that's just it. the nature of pirating stuff, right? I think I have zero good advice for this guy other than stop doing illegal stuff. I thought I would have good advice. I thought I'd have productive advice, man. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anything. Yeah, I mean, you know, just I respect. You, you know? I I respect the hustle. I dislike the risk that they're taking because yeah, you know, it's not worth it in my eyes. But in reality, you know, I, I mean, the risk maybe might be worth it in their eyes. You know, I'm not living in their shoes. I think this person just fears their dad, probably, which I think is silly. Yeah, like, I wonder all, what the we're dad We're all meant thinks. to leave the nest at some point. You're supposed to upset your parents. People forget that parents are people, and you're supposed to defy them, and, and you're supposed to justify it if you can do that, and you're supposed to feel strong and brave enough to do things outside of that. And I wonder what the dad would really think if, if uh, he told them. I, wonder if I don't even. Like, dude, I respect your hustle, bro. I don't, dude. That's how I mean. I know that sounds <laughs> Which bad. Which website is it? I, I wouldn't even be mad if my son came home like, "Hey, dad, I gotta tell you something. I've been lying. We're going to my friend's house to pirate porn." I go, "What?" I'd be like, "I think son. I first wouldn't believe it, and when he told me, I'd go like, "Damn, dude, that's pretty cool. Like, it's baller. Like that you went and did that. <laughs> like, at least you cared enough to like, yeah, go lie hustle. to me and then go do something." Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. gonna be a terrible I bet parent. you. I bet you the dad is probably into porn and he probably would be pretty proud of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I good. mean, you know, we never, we never know. Who knows? I mean, we never know. But Well, that's our shitty advice to that anonymous confession. Yeah. Go, um, go for it. Follow your heart. Follow your heart, son. <laughs> Hustle. Get that yeah. money online, yeah, you get pirate. That cheddar, yeah. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Dude, I had a really good conversation, man. Yeah. I hope you come back and do one in the future. Hell yeah. Uh, what'd you think of everything, fun. man? How, how does it, it feel? It was fun. It was fun. Do you feel like it a million was... people were watching him? Uh, that was a I trick question because so. I have 88 subscribers. I so hope, I hope a million people, people, are watching. people are watching. It's weird how it works on YouTube, man, because like I get way more views than I have subscribers, uh, which tells me that a lot of people don't know yeah, how to subscribe. Yeah. So I'm working on like videos to like help people do that. But um Anyways, man, no, I'm I'm glad that you came, man. I think it was really fun, and we will have to do this again soon. Yeah, man. for sure, man. It was a good time. All Thanks right, for having me over. Love you. Yeah, love oh, you, let's, man. Let's let's not do the shake on that one. Talk it up. All right, we're out. <laughs>